Mmm, hello. I'd like to introduce you to the zombie. An undead corporeal revenant created through the animation of a corpse. These relentless monstrosities can be identified by their weathered skin, cold, dead eyes, relentless hunger, and the fact that they were the lead guitarist in the Rolling Stones. Oh, hang on, no, I'm thinking of Keith Richards. In this video, I am going to be attempting to survive 100 days in a mutating zombie apocalypse. This time, the zombies are going to be intelligent, they're going to be creative, and most threatening of all, I've got to survive with Kim. Yes, my good friend Unsorted Guy invited me along for this one, and so grin it or bear it, we've got to survive together. I welcome you to 100 days in the zombie apocalypse. Kim and I began our journey on the ash vault of a nice empty highway. We had absolutely nothing to our names, except for each other, the power of friendship, and one NPC companion each. Unfortunately, we randomly selected our NPC companions, and I managed to get the extraordinarily useless Fruitless. No, it's you and Fruitless. F fruitless? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, oh, I see, because he's useless. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why? I can't believe I got a merchant. He's literally useless. In fact, okay, I'm setting oh, yeah. a waypoint here, okay? If ever I want to... Send him back here, then I can. All right, here's here's your your name tag, sir. What, Mr. Belgrave? <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Belgrave. It's Mr. Belgrave. Hello, sir. Is Hello, I am a shepherd of unsorted guy. Okay, Mr. Belgrave, if you say so. Maybe it's a hidden meaning behind Fru it. Fruitless, you're already pissing me off. Stop it. <laughs> get out of get out of my face. We're gonna have to set up some boundaries, Fruitless. Are you going see. to the city? What city? That city. Are you blind? There's no city there. This man is not going to live three days. Oh, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this man has no hope. He, he's he's short-sighted. Yeah, Kim. Kim's... Uh, I'll give Kim ten days, and uh, I'm going to go off into the wilderness, and I'll survive longer. Yeah, I, I, you enjoy fruitless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll try. I'll deserve each other. Sneeve and yeah. you, s s whatever. Oh God, I forgot how horrible my skin is. <laughs> uh, yep. You look a bit pale. Yeah, uh, thank you, Kim. I was hoping to get a tan out here. All right, you and Mr. Belgrave will go off to the city then, Kim, and I'll go off with uh, Miss hey, Mr. Useless here. One final word. Yeah. Fuck you. All right. Let us begin. And it looks like the day is already ending, so that's kind of sad. Oh, look, emus. Oh my god, fruitless. You're so slow. Is there any way I can speed you up? Travel. Set travel speed. Fast. For the love of god, man. What? Oh, he's so slow. He's so useless. <laughs> I hate you, fruitless. Oh, a village. Beautiful. Inside this village is going to be amazing things. And I've lost Fruitless, but it's fine. He's like a homing pigeon, he'll always find his way home. Spying that village with Fruitless in tow, we made our way downtown. We're walking fast, faces pass, and we're homebound. I spied a couple of zombies around me, but nothing too serious. Right now, they're not too much trouble, but soon they're not going to be that way. I made my way into the village just to have a look around, really, and also scavenge any underwear I could find. I also found some emu eggs earlier, so I tossed them on the ground, but didn't get lucky. He did not spawn an emu, nor a chicken. My next idea was to check what kind of villagers we have living here. Hello. Sadly, the village population was mainly made up of shepherds and cartographers. Oh wait, shepherd? Is that good? I can sell wool, right? Like from these guys. Ooh, and... Food. Aha! Both useless. What about you? What are you? Another shepherd. Terrible. Spied another zombie nearby, but this chap seemingly had problems with his legs. He couldn't move. And so I decided to beat him senseless for the crime of being crippled. I was a little confused at first as to why some of the zombies weren't moving at all, but later found out that there's some natural variation between the zombie speeds, and as they started out quite slow, that means some of them can't move. So for the first couple of days, some zombies are akin to plants. Bitey, flesh-eating plants. Oh. 
was a weak guy. Don't you for one second think that that means that these first few days are going to be a walk in the park. That is in no way the case. For you see, although some of the zombies are even so slow they can't move, they still have one hell of a bite. The slower they are, the deadlier they are. If I get bitten within the first few days, then that's a 100% chance of becoming infected with the zombie virus, which is almost certain death at this point. Wait a minute, it just occurred to me, where is Fruitless? Oh no. I seem to have lost my companion on the very first night. <laughs> he was so slow, he couldn't be helped. I feel bad though. If there's one tried and tested way to overcome grief, it's definitely comfort eating. So I gathered myself a couple of organic sandwiches and had myself a quick Reginald Snackington. Now thoroughly into the morning of day two, I decided maybe my morning of Fruitless was a bit premature, so perhaps we go look for him. First quest, we've got to go find and save Fruitless, wherever that man might be. As I was ambling my way over to where I last saw Fruitless, I came across my first special type of zombie. This chap here is a mining zombie, and he is one of the few types of zombies that can break blocks. Luckily, this one's crippled like many of the other zombies at the moment, so by keeping him at arm's length, I was able to take him down and not get nibbled in the process. Unfortunately, as I drew a little closer to the highway, it turns out Fruitless is alive, which is great. Awesome. It's good to see you, Fruitless. Welcome back. Made my way back to the village, making sure to avoid any bitey people, this time with Fruitless in tow, unfortunately, and I then decided to punch this ass for good measure. Yeah, what do you think of that? Alright, well, I started to feel a little bit worried that Fruitless might die, so I decided to lock, I mean, uh, so I decided to keep Fruitless in this nice little house here. That way, he can't hurt himself or bother me with his uselessness. Interestingly, it would seem that while I was distracted with the most useless character in the game, some zombies had wandered into the village and so they needed taken care of. I wasn't too stressed about them because they are so slow, but there is a certain amount of fear involved since one bite could potentially end my career. Now one thing I'm going to mention is that these aren't your regular undead fellows. These zombies can drop string, they can drop slime, and they can even drop gunpowder. Lovely. Gunpowder? Oh. <laughs> It'll blow up Kim at some point. I mean, it's tradition to burn Kim's house down. Yes, it's barely the middle of the second day, and I've already concluded that Kim's base needs to be destroyed. I don't really know how it's going to go down, but all I know for certain is that before this hundred days is up, I am going to destroy someone's base. And as Kim is the only person on the server with me, I'm afraid it's going to have to be him. So that's our first goal, I suppose, is destroy Kim's base. I don't know when I'm going to do it, but it's definitely going to be before the 100 days is up. Now I'm going to briefly explain how the infection works. If this young fellow here touches me in a non-consensual sort of way, then I will become infected, and after about 20 minutes, I will die. So it's best not to get touched at all. They're very slow right now, but they will get faster. And the only way to cure yourself if you get bitten by a zomboni is to go to Zanzibar. All right, I'm gonna pause my live commentary right there because by God, I was moving into something that could only be described as unhinged rambling. Anyway, so there is a way that you can cure yourself if you do get infected, but we won't talk about that just yet because we're not infected. So we'll bring it up uh, if that happens. Choppy choppy. Now I briefly paused in the middle of this forest to make myself some charcoal as it's the only fuel that we currently have available to us. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I was starting to get a little anxious. I hate being in a forest where you can't really see what's around you. The zombies could so easily sneak up on me. So most of the zombies are quite slow. So although they're closing in on me here, I should be fine. So long as I remember my scout training. Hey. Didn't go to scouts, so I'm gonna leave. Oh my god, and there's a crocodile. That is not a zombie, but it is very much not a thing that I wanna have in my life. Oh, and there's kangaroos over there. So we're in Australia, apparently. Either Australia or Saudi Arabia. <laughs> it's funny, actually. I said Saudi Arabia there. Because I know a fact about Australia and Saudi Arabia, but I can't remember which is the fact and which is untrue. Alright, so, following the previously established theme of unhinged ramblings, we've apparently moved into the pub quiz section of this video. One of these statements I'm gonna say is true. 
and one of them is false. And I can't remember which is which, so it's up to you to figure it out. Either Australia imports its kangaroos from Saudi Arabia, or Saudi Arabia imports its camels from Australia. One of those is true, and I'm not sure which. <laughs> but I'm certain one is true. Please place your answers in the comments section, and I will pick one lucky winner to receive two whole seconds of good vibes. What do we have here? Some blocks. Beautiful. This is what I wanted for my birthday. I decided being in this forest sucks, so I decided to use my incredibly awe-inspiring skills of carpentry and stair building to get out of the forest and into the city. It was really starting to rain buckets, so I started looking for some shelter. And in doing so, I realized that there are chests in these buildings. So maybe we go have a look. Unfortunately, this one was empty, but... Oh, zombies spawned in there. All right. I need to be very careful. Not go into any enclosed... What in the hell? I don't know what that is, and I'm terrified of it. And I'm going home. What the hell was that? Was that Poseidon? The Greek god of the sea is apparently in my zombie world. Oh. On guard, sir. I'm bad at this. Oh. I need to not mess around. I'm going to get bitten. No. Just as I said it. No. <laughs> okay, I have an apple. We need to find gold now. All right, now that we've got infected and have less than 20 minutes to live, let me briefly explain how we could possibly survive. So the zombie virus can only be counteracted by one item in the game, is a golden apple. Now, luckily the infection currently canoeing its way down my bloodstream has given us some time. There are four phases to the infection and each one lasts around five minutes. So we have 20 minutes total to cure ourselves or else. Or else what? Exactly. Mildly experiencing the physiological effects of panic, I headed back to where I had trapped Fruitless and had a quick look over what kind of items I currently have. In order to get our golden apple, we need two things, unfortunately. We need iron to make a pickaxe that can mine gold, and then we need to actually find some gold itself. Once we have gold, we can combine it with an apple, and then we'll be saved. Ever the procrastinator, I decided to take a quick power nap, and then stored some of my things and rushed out the front door. I don't know what to do. How am I gonna get iron and gold so quickly? I'm so screwed. No, Steve, you can do it. First we need iron, but we can't have any downtime. We can't wait until morning or anything. Now, remembering that hole in the ground where I'd seen that mining zombie earlier, I figured maybe that's a good spot to look for iron. And since I'm already infected, the zombies actually aren't as scary as they were before. The scariest thing right now is my disease and curing it is definitely at the forefront of my brain. However, I do need to remind myself that I don't have any armor, so I can't just be wandering about willy-nilly because they will eat me to death. So we'll utilize our little platform here, stab as many as possible, and then make our way down and hope we don't run into too many more. After the visible ones had been sent back into the grave, it was then time to climb down into the cavern and hope that we can get this here iron without too much more trouble. got two bits. Oh, we have one bit. Oh, but there's more here. Okay. Luckily for me, this much iron is plenty. However, I then ran into a new problem. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, we reached stage two of the illness. Oh, boy. I'm really not liking this vision. It's not good. This cave is going to be our best hope, I think. Throwing a cheeky little furnace together, I then placed that bad boy on the ground and started cooking up the iron we just found. We need a pickaxe as soon as possible, and then we need to go find gold. Also as soon as possible. As since we are now in stage two of the infection, we have less than 15 minutes to find our gold. Huzzah! Once we had our iron, we soon after had our pickaxe, and then it was time to go on the gold-looking time. What the hell did I just say? Things are gonna get very green very soon. And it's gonna be hard to see. Ow. Come on, please. Just give me some gold. I just need a few pieces. Damn you, game. Please, please. It's okay, I've got time. I've got time. I, I think I... I think the other thing as well is I technically need two veins. Because it would be very rare to get seven gold in a single vein. So, we're gonna have to find some very soon. 
Please, game. Unfortunately, my impeccable sense of direction actually got me lost in that mine, and I don't even think it was deep enough to be able to find gold in. So I lost maybe five minutes just wandering around, hoping that some of the shiny stuff in the walls would be the specific shiny stuff that I needed. Unfortunately, we didn't get lucky. This man bopped me in the mouth, and then I decided I should probably leave and try a different strategy. Okay, we're leaving the cave. We're abandoning the cave idea. Oh god. No. Okay, we have... I don't know how many more minutes. Three or four, I think. Everything is green. I'm living in Shrek land. I decided pod racing was a good trick, so I made myself a boat and then headed over to the sea. I figured my absolute best chance of survival is to find a deep ravine that cuts into the earth, and hopefully I can swim down there with the use of a bit of diving equipment and find myself some gold. That's probably my best option with only five minutes left. We have to look for underwater caves or something. Or maybe even a ruined portal or something like that. That'd do the job. Oh, mind the crocodile. <laughs> Anytime I spied a cave that I thought might be deep enough, I quickly swam down and had a look. Unfortunately for me, I didn't get lucky on the first couple of caves. But on the third cave, however, I found a nice little slice that went down very deep indeed. Just in case you don't play Minecraft, gold is one of the ores that is more commonly found deeper underground than higher. It can be found closer to the surface, but it's just not very likely. That is the reason why I'm kind of desperately digging at the deep slate here, just in case I would get lucky and there would happen to be some gold. This proved to be an ineffective waste of time, unfortunately, as uh, every so often I would have to consistently go to my scuba gear, I suppose, and gather up my breath. Again, just in case you don't play Minecraft, placing a door down underwater for some reason creates an air pocket that you can breathe in. And this is what I was using to breathe while I was underwater. And to add to my already escalating panic, I then progressed into the next stage of the infection. Now it was practically impossible to see at this point, as I seem to now be playing green screen simulator. And death is now uh, right around the corner, so I figured, okay, uh, we've got to try something else. I gave up on underwater mining and decided, okay, well, we either get very lucky in the city in these chests we discovered earlier, or we die. Those are our options. Uh, let's hope for option A. Come on, please. One chest. One chest. No chests. Hello? No. Okay. Please. Okay, calm down. Now, I saw a chest earlier. I just don't remember what it looked like. Uh, I think it was... Was it dark colored or like this? Okay, from here, we should be able to see. Oh, maybe it was one of those smaller buildings. Or that deep slate one. Okay. Come on. Okay, I think I think this is the building. I think that it was a building like this that had chests. Okay, nope. Right, quickly now. And nothing here either. Ah, balls! Okay, this building here with the giant ant outside. It's gotta be something like this. This looks good, this looks good. Okay, don't panic. I'm not seeing anything. All right, let's try. Let's try that one over there, the deep slate one. Come on. It looks like these two buildings are joined together. Double the buildings, double the chance. Come on, baby. Come on. Please. A chest. One chest. Please. No! No! <laughs> oh. oh, that's just sad. <laughs> oh, dear. Righto, let's respawn and talk about death. Don't look at me like that, Fruitless. This is your fault too, you know. Oh. Uh, that man just crawled under my legs. So during this hundred days, every time Kim or I dies, we lose maximum hearts. Our maximum health decreases a certain amount. Since I was the one to set the speedrun for the fastest death on this server, I lost two hearts. Whereas every regular death will be only one heart loss. And I'm not gonna lie to you. Playing the game this way sucks donkey nuts, because every time you die, it gets harder. It is fun though, in a masochistic sort of way, I suppose. So now that I'm considerably weaker than before, I decided to have a quick look at Fruitless and see what he can do for me. Fruitless is a merchant, 
which means, unfortunately, he can't do much. All I can do is kind of set specific coordinates in this menu here, and then tell him to go between them. And apparently this can be used to trade with other players, but I mean, honestly, I would rather go myself. Why would I send an NPC to do it for me? I decided to test Fruitless's mechanics, and told him to go to another waypoint that I'd set earlier. And there he goes. Maybe I should have sent him during the day. There he goes. Go see Kim, Fruitless. Hurry back. I'm glad he's gone. After sending Fruitless to hopefully sudden doom, I then noticed there was a pungent smell in the air and soon found myself surrounded by undead people. This time, instead of swinging my axe like a maniac, I decided to pillar up and then take them out that way. Much safer than before. It is my personal belief that the ticket to surviving the next uh, 97 days with only 8 hearts to my name is going to be being more careful than stupid. Which is going to be my most difficult challenge yet. In the morning of the fourth day, I ran into Sly Cooper, protagonist of the 2002 video game Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus. So if you're wondering where he's been all these years, he's been washing pork chops in Minecraft. You want to watch another one? I probably shouldn't be giving you all my food. No, you can't have any more. I, I need it. Now, right next to Sly Cooper happened to be a large underwater cave that I hadn't noticed earlier. And inside was a whole bunch of iron, which I grabbed because I lost all of my iron when I died. I decided I needed a change of scenery from that village. Besides, Fruitless might go back there and I don't want to be there when he gets back. So I wandered off over the plains and eventually came across this little crack in the earth here with a bunch of people inside. Bloody horse with a saddle. There's loads of them. Oh! I can hire this guy. But it costs 30 emeralds. Oh no. Okay, he's gonna drown. Unless I can save him. Okay, yeah, he died. But it wasn't my fault. I wasn't even here. Oh, he dropped a shield. How are we doing, lads? Patrol leader, 55. Ooh. You are an expensive man. Now, obviously I don't have any money, so I can't buy any of these humans, but I was thinking that since there's one expensive chap there, and a bunch of cheap ones, maybe I should just set my base near here, and when I have enough money, I can buy them then. So I just picked a random spot nearby and started carving myself a nice little home. I figured this ravine's a nice place to live once we get rid of all the moistness. And so I spent the entirety of the rest of the day, and the night actually, chopping at the stone, adding a few amenities, and making this place livable. Now, although I didn't run into any problems while I was doing the building, while I was gathering some ores afterwards, a couple of zombies did tend to fall into the ravine and then chase me underwater. This wasn't much of a problem, I just had to be careful they don't nibble on me again. But after I took this man and his powerful stench out of the gene pool, I then noticed there's another zombie nearby. This is another special zombie, a zombie horse. I don't really know much about zombie horses, and I intend to keep it that way. So I headed back inside. At the dawn of the fifth day, I was feeling a little lonely. So I decided, let's go see what that Norwegian is up to. Before I left, I decided to mess around with these horses. Turns out that they are very good horses with a lot of health. Now, when I first saw these equine fellows, I thought that they were trapped in the ravine. But it turns out that with a bit of finagling, you can indeed get them out of the water. So I decided to take Sir Horsington here and go off into the city to hopefully find Kimberly Kimmington. And as soon as the smell of fish reached my nostrils, I knew Kim was nearby. I see him. I see the man. Kim. Oh, hello? Kim. Sneeze. Kim. Who are you? I am outside. I found something, Kim. His name is Sir Horsington. Well, you got a horse? Yes. Oh my goodness. Isn't he beautiful? He's very beautiful. Yep. Hey, no! <laughs> I had a horse. No! <laughs> <laughs> that there was go. my only friend. Oh, look, potatoes. <laughs> Hello. How do you? Oh, no, they're my potatoes. How do you find me? I just <laughs> followed the signs. I said, Kim is this way. Go this way. These weren't done. My, my one was. Weren't done. My one was. Oh, no. I'm affected just now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This will be going so nice for me. You, you come and distract me. <laughs> I can't believe this. Oh, Kim, Kim, Kim. I'm infected by, by, with the zombie virus. I have four minutes to live. Is that how it works? No, you have around 20 minutes to live. 
Oh, 20 minutes. Do you have do you have any gold? Here. Oh, you rat yeah. <laughs> How'd you get that? What, these? Oh my god, you have another <laughs> one! How'd you get those? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm willing to trade. I'm willing to trade, huh? What okay. Do you, do you want? I'll what, trade what you, you I'll trade you three potatoes. <laughs> 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 You'll never believe where I found them. Ah, uh, uh, no. <laughs> where could it have been from? Okay, Kim. I could trade Sir Horsington, but you've wounded him. I kind of regret that. Poor you, guy. You regret nothing. hurting Sir Horsington? Well, you should. Yeah, he, he was a nice guy. What the hell? What? There's an elephant. Oh, yeah, but yeah, I've been what? looking at that. I was meaning to go <laughs> look, uh, take a closer look. There's a wandering trader on an elephant. Yeah. Okay. This world is quite yeah, bizarre, I, Kim. I gotta look at that. Come, horse. His name is Sir Horsington. It's my horse. I haven't traded him yet. What are you doing, Kim? Trying to see what this trader is all about. What he's all about. It's probably about <laughs> trading. That's what he's all about. It's really, found a bad spot of doing it. Oh, yes. It's stuff. So, how many hearts do you have right now? I have two less than I did before. Steve, I'm worried. It this is like the easy part of the 100 days. It's literally day three and I'm on eight hearts. It's, I know, I feel good about it. It's scary out here, Kim. Oh, but it's you. I, it's literally you. I'm like a show. What, yeah, what do you mean? There's you in here. Huh? There's you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, what, that's how I feel sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how I feel when I get up before 11 a.m. <laughs> oh, and the cobwebs. I'm a gamer now, Kim. I'm a PvPer. So, Kim, um, so Horsington is ready to uh, become yours if uh, you have a golden apple for me. I get the horse for the for the elephant. For the elephant. Oh, for, have, for, um, the, for the apple. Um, no, do you have iron? Actually, I have some. Yes. How much? Uh, how much can I get iron? Like, how much iron can I get for this golden apple? I will give you fifteen iron for one apple, oh, yeah. Kim. Deal. Cool. I don't have that you much have iron, but I'll go get it soon. No, you, what, what do you have on you right now? Nothing. It's all in my chest, in my hole. All right, then. Um, I ride this elephant. Maybe if you kill the um, the guy. But I would. Hey. Be huh? Careful, Kim. Get him! Get him, Kim! I... Oh. Okay, so the. The llama. The elephant didn't care, but the llama did. Yep. Llama! Yeah, there we go. Wait, you, you've got all the leads. That's not oh, fair. Oh, no! Okay, I, I, my screen is green now. I have to eat the golden apple <laughs> before I get too sick. <laughs> Aha! Aha! I'm back to normal. It's like it never happened to me. Yes. Indeed. Hey, Kim. This guy up here, is, is, he, a, is he a friend of yours? Where do you see him? Oh, in the window? On the side, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy. <laughs> is, is that where, that when you're friends? When you're, yeah, when Jimmy you... on the second floor. Uh, Jimmy never leaves apartment. <laughs> Jimmy. They, they call him. They call him me. They call him Jimmy the weird. Jimmy the weirdo. Oh, there's a turtle. Look at him. He's okay, hiding. So... You coward. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, now he's now he's offended. Where's the Horsington? Uh, I thought you had him. No, you had him. You lost Sir Horsington. <laughs> I had him. <laughs> no. I had him for only five minutes. Oh, you God. found him on the way over here. God, yes. God damn it! What the hell, Kim? Yeah. You owe me a golden apple. Huh? You owe me a golden apple for losing Sir Horsington. Oh. Also, by God, that zombie over there has a big sword. That's definitely above average. Yeah, dangerous weapon. Yeah, but look at the guy on the roof. He's considering things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do a flip! Kim, being the kind soul he is, decided to let me into his house. And after making my way through the front door, I then for some reason decided to pretend I was a sheep. I'm gonna hide in here with your sheep, Kim, where it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> Kim has a swanky little apartment going here, and I was oh, very impressed, especially when I saw this enchanting Steve. table in the next room. Come here. No, 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 no! You stop! No, 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 no! Don't. Kim, I've got a fantastic new trade offer for you. No. <laughs> No, I will literally kill you right here, right now. <laughs> Kim, you're not going to believe what I just found out here in the wilderness. Uh, <laughs> in the wilderness. Yeah. <laughs> Coming in, stealing my shantman table. Uh, no, you're not going in anywhere. Oh, hello. 
No, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't work if it's already over. Oh, don't stab me. <laughs> yeah, what were you trading for this uh, enchanting table, Kim? I'm not trading it. You're not trading it? Oh, okay, I'll keep it. No, I am not <laughs> trading it. <laughs> I feel like I'm playing with four Sean again. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> Uh, fine, here you go, you rat bastard. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't steal, my, don't steal my stuff. We barely started, uh, and we're already considering uh, killing each other. I wasn't considering killing you, Kim. What are you saying? Uh, well, I, wa I was. <laughs> oh, okay. As the sun rose on the sixth day, Kim, for some reason, seemed eager for me to leave his home. Also, the cops are here for you, Kim. Oh. Very and so we cops. decided to do a bit of shopping and walked around the nearby buildings hoping we could find any loot. Kim explained to me that in the city was where he had found his golden apples in one of the many chests which are scattered inside these buildings. We didn't find anything though and Kim was curious what had happened to Fruitless. And so we decided to go along the bridge where I thought I'd sent him. I wonder if Fruitful's even alive. He never, he never actually told me that he arrived at his destination which he's supposed to do. So, oh. so he, may, he may be dead. We, we can hope. I think this is where we uh, went our separate ways. Is it? Is it, is it about here? Okay. okay, well, he definitely didn't make it then. And um, I cannot run anymore. Okay. I'm slower than a zombie. Oh, oh, so much meat. Where did you get all of this meat? I know a guy who knows a guy. It was is, a... That, is that you, the logs down there? I see some planks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, oh, yeah, I live down here. Is that where you live? <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, yeah, I live in the hole here. Go, go, go and jump into the water, Kim. I was going to ask, is that water? I can't really tell if it's water or not. Yeah, it is water. So this is where you're living. Okay, so the, the horse has become a zombie horse now. All right, Steve, this is this is not good. Listen, it's fine, Kim. Just Move. don't. Yeah, yeah, it's it's actually quite hard to get in. <laughs> I will, I will, I will grant you that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get it. No. Okay, you hit me. Yeah, I hit you. <laughs> oh God. I mean. You hit me! Oh, I thought I got infected again. Oh my god. Oh, that was not fun. No, okay. that was terrifying. Kim, Kim. Kim. You can't be living like this. You're a mate. You you're in my house. You're a maniac. But you cannot be living like this. I can live like however the hell I want, Kim. You're not my mom. I'm getting. Let's get out of here. No! Okay, now. Um, I, I want to get out of this home. Uh, uh, this home of yours. This is not a home. This is a lovely home, Kim. This is a, this, this is a sewer. <laughs> This is the worst. Give me a golden apple and get out of my house, Kim. You know what? Where's iron then? What? Wh okay, how much iron do you need? You have no iron. Give me your boots. <laughs> and my motorcycle? Okay, you know, a boots. Here yeah, you go, okay. here you go. Oh, thank you, Kim. You legend. <laughs> that was my last golden apple. I'm being very kind. I just don't, I don't want you to die already on like day 10, you know? I, I already died on day 2. But it feels it feels yeah. good to now be wanted. But Steve, I cannot stay down here. I don't like it. Zombies keep spawning and trying to get in what you call a home. Despite my protest and Kim calling my home a sewer, we decided to leave the home as quickly as possible. And we ran into a comfortable herd of zombie horses. Okay. Oh. oh my god, Kim, they're, they're run! Taking they're, they're, <laughs> run, 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 run. I did not know they were aggressive. Neither did I. Where are you, Fruitless? Come to our aid. Oh, they're only chasing Kim. Why are they after me? Uh, I don't know. You look tastier. Oh, Steve, run! I'm running. Run, Steve! Run, no! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna bite you! <laughs> go, Kim, go! <laughs> Head for Paraguay! Oh, I thought he was right behind me by you. <laughs> what you were saying. Yeah, I'm not seeing Fruitless around. I think he, he may have, um... He may have not made it. Kim. Kim, what have you oh. done? What, what have you put us into right now? Kim, you've killed us both. Oh, no. What do you mean? We can do this. Oh my you god. Did it. I'm getting stressed out now. Almost. So am I, Kim. You're stressing me out. I was okay, doing... I was very happy in my sewer. So one additional thing you might notice is that I now have the bad omen debuff. What this means is that if I now enter another village with humans in it, that a large group of raiders, similar to the grey-skinned chaps that we just stabbed, will attack soon after. So I basically can't go into another village unless I kill myself first. Otherwise I'll, uh probably cause some problems for myself. So Kim once again has ruined my entire life. Kim and I then came across these horses, which seemed to have something horribly wrong with them. They wouldn't walk anywhere, and you couldn't put a saddle on them. And we were very confused. 
After we realized those horses were beyond help, we decided to chill by the roadside, which turned out to be a poor decision. Oh, look, Steve. Oh! Okay, well, that answers that question. I'm affected. Where did that zombie horse come from? <laughs> Downtown, it seems. Sneeve, I have... I, I need a golden apple back right now. <laughs> I need to get to the city. There's a city over there, you see it? Yes. I need to find a golden apple. Yes, panicking quite understandably, Kim headed off in the direction of the city. I really didn't want to give him my golden apple, if I'm being completely honest. I only had one, and I wanted to save it for myself. But I decided to accompany Kim to the city anyway, if only perhaps just to see him die from infection. Because I'm just a caring <laughs> guy like that. <laughs> I don't know, Steve. I don't want to die like you did. <laughs> I'm not infected anymore. I kind of cured myself the old-fashioned way. Yeah, you did. But dying, I, I'm not gonna die this, uh, during this uh, 100 days. No? Never. Oh. I see. A oh, rogue's best... Something. What did you get? I don't know what it means, even. Acquire a dagger. Ah. Did you get a dagger? Apparently. I did get a dagger. An iron dagger. An iron dagger? Oh, the... okay. Well, that seems unfair. Oh, it's nighttime here. Stab! Ah, he stabbed me in the ass. <laughs> All right, now we gotta get in here and uh, find me. We decided to head into the nearest building in search of loot. Kim desperately needed that golden apple, and I wanted to help him find it. Kind of. Oh. You give me a torch in my hand. You found a golden apple, you got it. No. Don't worry about it, Kim. Are we, are we gonna fight each other over loot here? <laughs> There's so many buildings, we're all in the same building fighting each other. Yeah, I'll follow you, oh, Kim. Oh, 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 oh. What? No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. We're so good at sharing. Like that time you shared your enchanting table with me, Kim. Oh, you mean like the one that I have in my intro right now? The second one? Yeah. What? So it turns out that Kim had found a second enchanting table, but he didn't want it, so he decided to toss it out the window of this building. Because he knew I wanted it. Kim! <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> I need it? <laughs> what the hell? Now I'm gonna run. I feel like a poor person. Like you're, you're like skipping coins my way, and I'm dashing the other <laughs> peasants on the head to get them. Oh. oh, I found something here. I don't have. Wait, this is the one I. Have. Like the poor person I am, I wandered outside and grabbed that enchanting table that Kim had thrown. It was then that I discovered the true enemy of this 100 days, and it's not zombies. It's seagulls. Ah, no! <laughs> what is happening to you right now? The seagull stole my golden apple! <laughs> no way! Sneeve, we can't no. do this! Oh I'm my god, I gotta get out of stage. here! I'm going to the next stage! No! The seagull! Why? Oh no! Everything is green, Sneeve! <laughs> it's all green! Well in that case, come to me, Kim, and I'll give you a golden apple. Also, I found another edge hunting table. We got them coming out of our ears, Kim. I feel scared, Kim. I can't see anything, I'm blind. Ah! Oh my god, that guy was so close. Get away with your diseases. Luckily for Kim, as it turned out, that seagull had failed to grab either of my golden apples, and so I still had one for Kim. However, he managed to get lost and left the building, but managed to see me in the window. Fifth, oh! fifth floor. Come into my hole, Kim. There we are. Oh, beautiful. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I have... 20 seconds. Tw <laughs> uh, okay, and how, many, how much gold do you have? Give me all your gold. I uh, only have this. Uh, okay, well. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, oh, my golden apple. I should have never left you behind. <laughs> oh, I can see normally again. I'm gonna live. If only you weren't. Once dawn broke, we began another looting session of the city. I found these pumpkins, which I knew would come in handy later. I also grabbed an iron from a nearby apartment block. And while exploring that same building, Kim and I found something extremely strange. It's seals. Seag seals, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> How did they get up here, Kim? Look at this. They need water. They're so thirsty. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, yeah, no. lovely. Oh, no, Kim. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> they were so dry. They were. Th Please do not repeat this. The survivors must live on. <laughs> they must tell the tale of what happened here. Of the, of the yes. man that decimated their exactly. entire lives. 
Following Kim's war crimes, I found some books in a building and decided to keep them for myself. We're gonna be doing some enchanting later and they will come in handy. Kim and I kept looting for a while in the hopes that we would find additional things. Unfortunately, it seems like we weren't really cooperating and instead we're working against one another. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that was a cheeky <laughs> laugh. <laughs> Later on, in the middle of the night, we ran into another group of those soldiers or recruits or whatever, and I made the discovery that they cost differing amounts of emeralds depending on their maximum health. The more health they have, the more expensive the humans are. And the cheapest of these lads cost only nine emeralds. And this revelation got the cogs in my brain whirring at a worrying speed, and I began to develop a master plan for surviving the next 90 days. I'll explain more later. For now, Kim was trying to get this horse out of this lake, and I was fighting off zombies trying to help him. Eventually, thanks to some divine providence or something, we managed to get the horse out of the oh, water, oh. and neither of us, surprisingly, was infected. I got him. Yes, yes, he's on, on the land. Come. And then Kim and I decided to leave the city, taking a romantic walk down the highway, and Kim decided to test drive his new Equus Calibus. You know, these kind of remind, I'm, I kind of remind myself of Rick Rhymes right now. Kim and I had a quick no, pit stop on the road, having some snacks that I'd had cooking up in my back pocket. We were chatting about The Walking Dead and how bad its conclusion was, and then I used a momentary lapse in Kim's defenses to steal his horse. Uh, I think like you, I tried to finish it just for the sake of finishing it. It's like, I've I've been watching this show for years, I should at least know how it ends, but... No, how could you? I'm listening to your story. <laughs> Sorry, Kim. I'm a hustler, baby. So, Horsington, we're back again. We've recovered from Kim's thievery. I rode for a wee while into the evening, mainly just trying to put some distance between me and Kim, who might want his horse back, but eventually I slowed down because there were seagulls ahead, and I was more afraid of them than I was the zombies, to be honest. I only have one golden apple to my name, and if a sky rat sweeps over and steals it, I'm gonna have an aneurysm. Luckily, immediately to my right seemed quite a nice place to build a base, honestly, and I was thinking that getting Sir Horsington back to my sewer would be uh, just a suicide for him. So maybe we'll make a base here instead. The other base wasn't very, uh, wasn't very good, honestly. So it doesn't really matter, we'll just abandon it. I brought Sir Horsington off the highway using a water elevator, and then he decided to take a bath, apparently. Now I grabbed Sir Horsington and brought him over to the middle, at which point he started freaking out for some reason. And then I decided to place the prodigal block of my base to be. Now one thing that I would really like to do, if possible this hundred days, is make a base that doesn't look like absolute trash. And unfortunately, the bases that I make are the leading cause of blindness for adults age 18 to 35. And so this time, we're gonna try a different strategy, and hopefully by the end, the base won't make your eyeballs hemorrhage. But for now, though, we need to stop Sir Horsington running around, so we'll just, uh, call this a stables. But, but don't worry, I swear to God, it will look better before the end. Plan is right now, we'll make two little struts here, and then we'll put a platform on top. All I need right now is a place to sleep, a place where the zombies can't reach. Once I have that, then I can worry about making this place prettier and also deciding what exactly I want to make with it. And so for the rest of the evening I spent some time chopping some wood and then adding some additional height onto the structure. In the morning I gathered some stone because the majority of the base we're going to be make is probably going to be built out of stone. The last thing we want is for the zombies to mutate and learn how to break wooden things and for my base to be made entirely of wood. And speaking of mutations, since it's day 10 our undead chums just got some. For reasons unknown, they've decided that they're going to start wearing armor and weapons now and also those jogging classes have paid off and they're now a little bit faster than before. So the average zombie, depending on what they're holding or wearing, could do a lot more damage and also be a lot harder to kill. So we're going to have to be careful. And this brings us tidily back to the master plan. Step one is going to be getting a weapon that will help us survive the zombie apocalypse. Yesterday I managed to find a mending book in one of those buildings Kim and I looted, so now all we need is a weapon to put it on. Now unfortunately, a weapon like that isn't just gonna come smack me in the mouth, so we'll have to make it ourselves, and for that we'll need some diamonds. Now we aren't going to be getting diamonds for a wee while at least, so for now we'll just get some wood so we have some blocks and attempt to build our base. Now I made this little tower thing here which can hopefully allow me to get up and uh, onto and off to the highway. But it is quite tricky to both gather wood and also build with all of these infectious men around. 
They're also noticeably faster than before, and uh, that man there is wearing armor, as you can tell. However, when they died, they did happen to drop these loot bags. I didn't know what these were at the time, but after some investigating, I found that these things would definitely give an EA executive a full erection. Essentially, they just give you a bunch of random items. These could range from ores to useless things like flesh. Now I just got this uh, chain armor, so I'm gonna put it on Sir Horsington. Yes, Sir Horsington's SoundCloud library has been popping off, so he's looking good. We also got three gold, which might help us getting a golden apple later, and some fire blast charges, which we can use to make fire blast TNTs. More on this later. For now, I decided to make a crossbow because I was seeing a bunch of seagulls flying around and I wanted them dead. Luckily for the seagulls, I have the shooting skills of a double amputee who's had too many tequila shots and unluckily for me, this happened. No. Knowing the horde was just moments away was good motivation for me to make my base a little bit taller. Thankfully though, although the horde was only moments away, I was still not panicking and was able to keep a clear head and my priorities in order. <laughs> Got him. Uh, unfortunately though, before managing to make my base in any way a defensible structure, the Horde had arrived. Luckily though, I'd been preparing for this, so I have plenty of supplies and- Oh! Okay, sword's broken. Abandon the base! We've done all we could here. Unfortunately, this is a loss. Uh, but we'll quickly make ourselves a new sword here. Might need that. Oh my god, that's a lot of them. Uh, luckily I'm safe in the trees. Oh! Quick update, uh, I don't seem to be safe in the trees. Let's, uh, let's flee some more. Uh, ow, my legs. I feel like a monkey. Okay, here's the plan. We head for the highway and then we sail for Geneva. I recognize now the complication of not being able to sail on a highway, but we're going to ignore that. Anyway, my real plan is going to be run down this highway and hopefully the horde will have moved on by the time we come back. I ran for a wee while and just as the sun was going night night, I noticed that there is a village just over there. And this is fantastic because step number two on the master plan is going to be to hire ourselves an army to defend us. And hopefully this village will contain some of the soldiers we need. Ah yes, raid. I had forgotten about that. And another thing that I'd forgotten about is that the crossbow doesn't use arrows, it uses bolts. And I don't have any of these, uh, though it does look like, thanks to some stuff I found in this chest, I will be able to make some. Beautiful. Now, as I was anticipating the village soon being attacked by raiders, I tried to save these morons. And then in an unrelated note, I also found some pumpkins and some crows nearby. So I threw some seeds down just in case one of the crows wanted to be my friend. And just as I had found my first few pieces of armor in a chest, I then found out that indeed one of the crows had decided to become friendly. His name is of course Leroy. Leroy's back. Yes, is my boy. Leroy the crow. I need food. Now, if I was going to be defending this village, they may as well feed me, so I stole all the food from these people. And then, while pillaging a local blacksmith, I also found a few upgrades. So I felt like I was ready to fight the pillagers. The only problem was, where the hell are they? The zombies are here, but I'm not seeing any raiders. Get him, Leroy! Leroy's attacking! <laughs> I didn't know he could do that. Yes, Leroy! It took me all day, but eventually I found the raiders. <laughs> <laughs> They're all on the bridge. As Leroy and I were scratching our noodles, trying to think of a plan of attack, I happened to notice that indeed this village is spawning those little uh, soldier guys that can be hired. So if we can deal with the grey dudes, then we may have a couple of soldiers to our name. Now I wasn't entirely sure what these pillagers were going to do once I approached them, so I decided caution is going to be the way forward. I pillared my way up onto the highway and then tentatively took a couple of steps outwards, ready to of course jump back into the water if anyone decided to bongle me. Luckily though, they seemed a bit transfixed on the village and for some reason didn't seem to care at all about what I was doing. So I thought I'll build a little defensive structure that I can return to if I I get into trouble and then I can attempt to take them out one by one. Unfortunately I didn't have many bolts so my second strategy was gonna be to lure them over to the defensive structure and then stab at their knees. Yep, there we go. I thought the strategy was working at first but then they seemed to just go back to where they were. So I was a little confused. Once I ran out of crossbow bolts there was only one chap left so I figured some brutish stabbing is in order. This should do the job. 
Thanks for playing, my guy. Unfortunately, of course, for those of you familiar with Minecraft, this is only wave one of like five. And so the second wave soon appeared on the bridge as well. And this wave is gonna be much trickier because they've got axe wielders now. And those chaps are no bueno, as they say in Germany. Now I modified my disgusting defensive structure with a little slab because that way I can crouch and get under it and they don't have the ability to do that. Stiff knees, I think. Again, attempting my strategy of luring them back to my defensive structure, I kind of edged my way forward to see how close I would get before they would start chasing me. And much to my surprise, I could literally stand in front of them, stabbing them, and they didn't seem to care. So I figured, okay. This seems to be working. Let's uh, let's let's just keep stabbing. This guy is a testicle. Now, unfortunately, I'd forgotten the last place I slept was in my sewer home. Because I had died a considerable distance away from my sewer, I now had to make the long trek back. I made myself some simple tools to help me get there, and also happened to come across a ruined portal and was able to nab a couple of nice golden enchanted items. I got myself a golden hoe, which uh, helped mend the damage to my pride that was done by the fact that I'm now on seven hearts on day 12. And it wasn't until the night of day 13 that I had managed to get all of my stuff back. Most of those goons had managed to fall into the water and I was able to swim underneath and stab them. I definitely lost a few items, I'm not sure which though. As you can see here, one of the raiders hadn't fallen off the bridge, but my uh, motivation to finish this raid thing is uh, very low. Uh, so we'll go back home, and hopefully the horde's gone now. At the very least, we have a new Sir Horsington, and also Leroy. So then I'm gonna call that a win. Now I took Sir Horsington 2, Equine Boogaloo, onto the highway and then managed to follow my impeccable sense of direction all the way home. Only stopping briefly so I could grab some gravel and some coal and also get kissed on the mouth. That drowned came out of nowhere. Okay, now I'm infected. Ah. Uh, well, uh, one left. Uh, so Horsington, how? You're not a fish. He's, he thinks he's a flying fish. Idiot. I elected it too difficult of a task to get Sir Horsington 2 out of the water, so I just went home. Luckily, Sir Horsington 1 seems to still be trapped and isn't dead. Also, there is Sir Horsington the Third, thinking that he's a fish. And well, it was about that time I realized what I'd lost when I died. I lost all my iron, so we need to go down underwater, get moist, and get some more. There's nothing to it, you've just got to do it. That's what they say. I also found this stuff, which can be used to make more golden apples. It's called gold. Certainly would have been nice to find this a little earlier. Now I decided to take out my anvil, place it down, and also throw down my enchanting table. You see, we're gonna be staying here for quite a while, so we may as well get settled in. At least I thought I was gonna be staying there for a while. Unfortunately, then, the worst thing that could possibly happen, happened. Kim showed up. Oh no! He's found <laughs> me! He's found me! Hi, <laughs> how's it going? No! Oh, and he's got Sir Horsington again. I was actually like here for. I was here for, uh, to give you a gift. Oh God, the gift of stabbing. Oh. Oh, thank you, Kim. Yes. That's actually a, a kind. Uh, that's actually a kind thing you've done. So what are you building here? Kim. Now you're seeing. I'm not edge of steel. <laughs> you say that, Kim, but you had that glint in your eye. The glint of a dog that's you staring at the ham, the Christmas ham on the table. Oh my oh, god! What? Kim! Look oh what no. you've done! Well, that's not me! Oh my god, I have a special weapon, Steve. I have a special weapon. Oh my god, Kim! You've caused the death of oh. us all! No, look at this. Steve, watch. Watch this. I'm watching him. Oh, I missed it. You missed it. That's not as good as I hoped. Uh, yeah, we're in trouble now, Kim. Oh my God, they're behind us as well. Kim, Kim, Kim. Oh, oh, I got him. Look at this. What oh boy. You... Oh my God. What are you doing, I'm sorry, Kim? I'm killing the zombies once and for all. <laughs> once and for all. No, you killed Leroy! You bastard! <laughs> Leroy! 
We get him with <laughs> Leroy. We gotta get out of here. This is out they're of They're destroying my base. Oh my god. I gotta get onto the trees again. Oh my god, no. Oh! Run, Kim! Oh my god! Look what you've done, oh. Kim! Oh my god, what? the leg! <laughs> How can you blame me? <laughs> because you came! Uh, it's just a massive coincidence that Kim suddenly arrives and then all of the zombies in the world turn up. Alright, Steve, you have arrows. I need arrows. I don't have any arrows! Oh my god, and there's a third. Kim! For the love of God, Kim! They're gonna die! They do have to die, but I don't have to die! Oh my god, they're everywhere. What do we do, Steve? We gotta, back, we gotta get back on the highway. Yes. I don't like this, Kim. I appear to be safe, I think. I think they can't get to me right now. They all have weapons as well. Oh god, they're climbing on top of one another. Oh god. Oh my god, this is dealing with one. One took that many stabs. This base I have is cursed, isn't it? My axe must have broken as well. Now, the horde seemed to have a lot of trouble crossing the water, and it was then that I noticed that Kim is back on the highway. So I decided that uh, swimming back to the highway is probably going to be my smartest strategy here. I managed to swim my way past a school of zombies and make it back round near the base. Kim had apparently adopted a hard-boiled strategy towards dealing with the zombies. He's melting them. Well done, Kim. And I utilized the distance I had between me and the horde to pillar up and get back onto the highway. Kim! Okay, I'm really sorry about your base, okay? <laughs> how... How could you... Oh no, it's the Washington's been infected! Ah! Uh, every time, Kim! Every time I see you, so Horsington is either murdered or worse! I'm sorry about this. I, I did give you a good gift. I came, I, I came with good intentions. Did you? This doesn't yeah, look like good... You gave... Like, do you know the law of equivalent exchange, Kim? Oh yeah, alchemy, right? Yeah. So in in Kim's terms of equivalent exchange, it's one pair of boots for a horde of zombies <laughs> and complete <laughs> annihilation of my base. What a trade! <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing down here, Kim? You're making them angry. Yeah, no, I'm just like uh, uh, reducing their numbers. I think I think that's a nice way of saying it. They have so much health. I know. It's because of all the armor. <laughs> here, Sneev. Here, here's all, also another sign of my kindness. Some bread. Thanks, Jesus. But it, you need it right now. <laughs> it's urgent. Yeah, I do, I do. Yeah, thank you, Kim. I, I do appreciate it. Starvation's bad. How are they not all dead yet? Well, you you know when they make that roaring sound? I think they're turning into lava zombies. Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed, welcoming in the third special zombie type of this video. The burned zombie otherwise known as Bernie. These guys are strong, but they aren't particularly dangerous because they only spawn in lava or fire, and if you're in lava or on fire, then you've got other problems than dealing with zombies. But they exist, so they should at least be kept in mind. So yeah, are you gonna stay here, you think? Well, I'm kind of, you... I'm kind of waiting. I want to get back down to my base. You have to get your mending book here and whatnot? No, I have that. I just want to get back down there because there's like food and... I, I used to have a base there, Kim. Actually, honestly, maybe I should just move. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point in living here anymore. I mean, uh, like a clean-up day, and you should, you should be almost A clean-up day? Look at this place. <laughs> this place it's has so been dark. nuked. Some some madman. How are you even throwing TNTs? Oh, you got to have strong arms. Strong <laughs> I got to go to the gym. And, go, and then you, you, put, you pick it up, and you go... Yep, <laughs> yep. 
I made my way off the highway and then headed down to take care of some of the stragglers. I wanted to get these guys away from my base so I could loot my chests and then move. There's no point in staying here anymore. Sadly, in so doing, I managed to get myself infected once again. Oh my god, I'm infected again. God damn it. Are you really? Yes. You just gotta stand behind the zombies and kill them. Yeah, well, it only works if they're not... <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> so, this is difficult. So, so let, let's review, Kim. <laughs> you, come, review. you come to my house, you completely annihilate everything I've built, you infect Sir Horsington, who's now chasing me! <laughs> no! You can kill him, you already infected him. Just get, get it done. You infected Sir Horsington. You destroyed my house. You brought the plague here. I am now infected. <laughs> and in return, you gave me three pieces of bread and some iron boots. You know, I look at it differently. I'm more like I came here <laughs> I when the horde attacked, did. and I saved and I saved your life. No, you brought the horde to me. <laughs> look at my base. <laughs> it's covered in gravel and like lost dreams. Yeah, there's a big crater here now. Yeah, funny that. Thanks, Kim. I had a home here, you know, once. Where do you live, Kim? <laughs> Unrelated. Oh, you know where I live. <laughs> now, you know where I live, but I'm uh, I'm gonna move, I think. You're gonna move? Yeah. That makes sense. Considering what I'm gonna do to your base. <laughs> no! no. <laughs> this was really bad for me, too. Was it? I feel like I was the, I'm the worse off, Kim. I'm still infected, <laughs> by the way. Uh, oh, by you, by you! Oh my god! Kim. I'm gonna stab you now, Kim. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> uh, take this, you need a weapon. Good. Luckily, as it so happened, I'd managed to mine enough gold the other day to make myself a spare apple. So now we're at uh, one reserve apple once again, sadly. As punishment for Kim's war crimes, I forced him to accompany me back to the nether portal thingy that I found earlier. And after a brief amount of brain bleeding, thanks to the seagull trying to steal another one of my apples... Gold apple! You got your gold apple! <laughs> oh, thank God. Run, Kim! I fucking hate seagulls. If I had a seagull and a hydraulic press, I'd be a happy man. Also, in good news, Kim managed to get infected on the ways. Anyway, we eventually found ourselves back at the ruined portal. And this right here is the reason we came back. I couldn't grab these before because when I died I didn't have an iron pickaxe. But now I can. So we have some reserve gold. We just need apples. And after we split the gold that we got from the portal, Kim and I separated ways. And I came up with the next step in my master plan. And that is going to be getting vengeance on Kim. This also comes with a side goal of wanting to steal useful supplies from Kim, but the main thing is the vengeance. The vengeance is, uh, the important part. While I was wandering about aimlessly, homeless, of course, I noticed another village nearby, just in time to enter Shrek vision. I made my way over, and apart from the odd straggling zombie here and there, the village was ultimately quite safe, and there were even some soldiers walking around. So the beautiful thing about this is, we can probably use this village to farm emeralds and also get ourselves our soldiers, and therefore achieve one of the goals on the master plan. I killed myself with my infection that I got thanks to Kim, and then utilized the gold that I got from the portal to make myself another spare apple. The green was making me nauseous, and I'm very glad to not be infected anymore. Now just around the corner from that there village, we happen to find this nice flat block of land with a couple of uh, sheep that for some reason didn't survive. But anyway, this place is kind of nice. It could very well do as a spot for building a new base. So that's Sir Horsington. Good God, he swam a long way. It is Sir Horsington. What the hell? Now I headed back into the village to loot anything that I hadn't looted before and also investigate what these villagers will offer me. We're going to need a lot of emeralds for our army, you see, and so we're gonna need a way to be able to generate them. The easiest way is going to be trading with villagers. And so if we can't find a good merchant here, then we'll have to make one. 26 potatoes for one emerald. You, sir, are a scammer. Oh my God, so many apples. Oh my God. Yeah, so thanks to pilfering all those apples from these morons, uh, we now have more apples than we should need for a good long time. Also, there happens to be quite a few traders in this village, I've noticed. This man is absolutely terrible, but this one's really good. Six emerald- oh, six leather for one emerald. That's not too bad, that's, that's pretty good. This guy's useless. 
There's the odd zombie here and there, but this village is very highly populated. It's awesome, honestly. There's even a child running around here somewhere, I can hear him. Oh, there he is. How's it going, Tim Tim? Anyway, so I've trapped this man here because I want him to have a specific job. You see, if you trap a villager and then you give them a particular workstation, you can control which job they have. I want to have a Fletcher because that way I can trade sticks which are very easy to come by. Unfortunately for me, as it turns out, this man is about as useful as a brush covered in dog feces. This man is in technical terms known as a twat, which is a, a villager that cannot and will not have any job at all. So basically this man's entirely useless and we have to find someone else. Thankfully I was able to utilize this man's love for carbohydrates to trap him and turn him into a Fletcher. And there we go, now we've got sticks available to us and we can also buy bows for four emeralds. But the main thing is the sticks. Now we have uh, a technically infinite source of emeralds. It just requires a little bit of labor on my part. Now I decided to make a little defensive structure around our Fletcher man here. He is a very valuable man and we don't want him getting nabbed by any wandering zombies. So we'll just seal out man in here that way he's uh you know safe from himself and others there we are now i decided to do a little bit of trading with young julian here to uh grab myself my first few emeralds and then i also decided to spend those emeralds on a bow for the simple reason that i don't have a bow yet and arrows for bows are much easier to make than bolts for crossbows so uh hopefully we'll have some ranged ammunition to our name. Unfortunately, at the beginning of the next day, I heard a hideous sound that made me depressed. That sound is the sound of a zombie transforming. Panicking, I made my way over to my fletching boy, only to find that it was too late. No! <laughs> they infected, uh, Franklin the Fletcher. You, you absolute knobs. How did this happen? Oh, the door, oh, they broke the door. That makes logical sense. In order to give myself therapy, I decided to open a loot box, and I managed to get a golden helmet. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. The fact that Jeremy died, who cares, honestly. Right, uh, there's nothing that can be done about you lads. Sorry. Terribly sorry about that, chaps. Right. Let's find some new Fletchers. And uh, these ones hopefully won't die. Following the death of Franklin, or whatever his name was, I went to the center of town and tried to recruit myself a couple of extra villagers. I tried to trap this man into this box, but he wasn't uh, cooperating for some reason. So I threw bread down, but he just nabbed it and ran off again. I know, what a dick. A little bit of luck ended up coming my way though, and in the center of town was also this man. So I did not hesitate in purchasing him. And his name is... Recruit. Uh, re Recruit. Yes. Oh my god. Look away, Rukrish. There's horrible things happening. Trying to block the image of Minecraft villagers going at it in the middle of the town square, I decided to look at what I could do with Rukrish, and it turns out that he has a bunch of commands which are very handy. And I can also equip him with weapons and armor. And since I had some of that uh, rusty armor that the zombies wear lying around, I decided to kit him out in some of that. Hopefully this man will save us from all horror. While I was going out on a nightly stroll, I happened to notice that the fornication from earlier seems to have produced a child. So I decided to trap this man in his room for the punishment of being a degenerate. While I was fighting off some zombies, I got to see Recruit in action. And it turns out that he is an actual Chad. Once we have 10 or 20 of these guys, I feel like we're gonna be hard to deal with. With the beginning of day 20, of course, becomes a new mutation. This time, our zombie boys have gotten slightly more intelligent. And of course, with the speed boost of last time, they're now looking a little beefier than they were at the beginning. With their increased intelligence comes a couple of new abilities. The zombies can now summon their friends to aid them in combat, as well as track the player from further away. All this combined, of course, simply means that when we see zombies, we'll be seeing quite a lot more of them. These new mechanics, of course, make me especially grateful for the fact that I'm no longer playing by myself and instead now have Recruit to play with me. I'm, of course, technically also playing with Kim, but he doesn't count because he's a war criminal. I then managed to find another soldier in that village. This man hadn't been hired and had only spawned yesterday, it seems. This man costed six emeralds, though, which I don't have, so I'm gonna have to go and get some more sticks. A couple of cheeky tree annihilations later, and we had ourselves the sticks needed. Now, I went to a Fletcher, and I exchanged some of my hard-earned sticks for cash, and then went out in search of that archer, and managed to find him capping some fools on the edge of the village. Oh, Bo, man, you're cracked. Unfortunately, killing that zombie seems to have leveled him up and now he's out of my price range. So I set about chopping some nearby trees in order to be able to afford this expensive specimen of a villager. But sadly, the world had other plans. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
Rakrush, no! Run, Rakrush! <laughs> do not, do not fight them! You, you will not survive! Yes, come with me, Rakrush! Oh, thank God he has more than one brain cell. I thought he was gonna run in there like, like a madman. Do not fight them, Rakrush. There are too many. Okay, over the water we go, Rakrush. Bob to freedom, Rakrush. Now having the horde hot on my tails was certainly worrying, but with Rakrush at my side, I felt like we have a chance of surviving here. Now I could of course have just ran away like the brave man I usually am, but I wanted to stay behind this time as I didn't want the village to be entirely decimated by this horde. I wanted to in some way keep their attention on me so that Rakrush and I could take off the stragglers and maybe we could beat them. Rakrush just got a potato. That's some good eating. Get him! Get him! Stab him! Yes. Unfortunately though, the zombies, due to their recent mutations, had decided to flank us, and the zombies coming from the village didn't seem to have any end in sight. What this meant, of course, was that fleeing was our only option, and unfortunately due to Rukrush's, shall we say, limited intellectual capabilities, that if I wanted to keep him alive, I would have to flee. I'm gonna need an army, aren't I? Oh, oh. Bowman! No! Oh, no! There were too many, even for Bowman. Yes, sadly, Bowman has perished. Died defending the village he loved. At least I think he loved this village. I guess for all I know, they could have been bullying him for being bald or something. Anyway, I figure Rakrush and I have done all we can. We should, uh, skedaddle. Let's get out of here. Yes, as much as I wanted to attempt to save the residents of the village, uh, for the purposes of my capitalist designs, unfortunately, uh, Rakrush and I are not powerful enough to fight that many zombies. So we're going to just leave, and then hopefully the Horde will have uh, left by the time we come back, and uh, hopefully there will also be some survivors in the village. But I'm not seeing any right now. <laughs> My hopes aren't high. Now I took Rakrush out for some training. I uh, decided to go near the city, and as it was the middle of the night and I don't have a bed, we may as well just uh, train up his health and stats. Sadly though, due to the zombies' armor and the seemingly endless spawn of them, we found ourselves in hot water quite quickly, and it is entirely possible that we weren't far enough away from the village to kind of thin out the horde, and instead we were getting remnants here and there, an absurd amount, honestly. Although my tap dancing classes were paying off and I hadn't managed to get hit during the night, Rukrush wasn't so lucky, and indeed some of his armor even broke. I told Rukrush to hold this position while I scouted ahead and looked for a spot to build a base. Now, I didn't notice at first, but while I was away getting diseases, Rukrush sadly perished. Now, it's always a sad day when you lose an employee, and it wasn't until I'm literally editing this that I realized what exactly had happened. In this clip, I'm actually running around looking for him. I hadn't realized what had happened yet. But basically, as you can tell from this clip here, when his armor broke, so did his axe. So I left him back there, swarmed by zombies without protection. And uh, I think it's quite clear what happened after that. But that's okay, you know, we lost Rakrush, but you live and you learn. Well, Rakrush doesn't, but once the sunlight started rising over the horizon, I decided to go back to the village and uh, assess the damage. I had a look around and looked inside houses, but uh, yeah, it, it seems that there are almost zero survivors, except this guy. But he also managed to get infected, as you can tell, and uh, I'll be damned if I'm giving him my last golden apple. Damn it, I hate the peasantry. They're so lazy. They always do things like die. So selfish. And oh my god, I just got infected again, and now I don't have a golden apple. Tits! Anyway, considering there's nothing here in this village for me anymore, I decided to leave. I'm infected, and now I don't have a golden apple, but I think I know how I can get one. So, Orsington, hello. I hope you're enjoying your fish life. I don't necessarily approve of it, but I will accept it. Finally, on day 21, I finally managed to rub a couple of brain cells together and figure out how to use this infection mechanic. You see, you get 20 minutes of infection, so that means 20 minutes of infection immunity. You can't get reinfected if you're already infected, so you may as well use that 20 minutes looking for a cure or some other such. I decided I'd spend 10 minutes looting the city, and if I still didn't have anything after 10 minutes, then I would go back to my old base which I abandoned, where I'm fairly sure I left some gold. Sadly, I didn't get lucky and re-entered Shrek Vision, so I'm heading back to my base. I also shot Kim a cheeky DM just in case this didn't work out. I wasn't sure how much gold I had left. And as it so happens, this was a good idea. Because I had seven gold, and I need eight for a golden apple. And so we must now do the stupidest thing I've ever done. We must put some faith in Kim. Kim! Kim! Save me, Kim! I dare you! I'm below you! I I'm, see you! I'm gonna climb up! 
I have very little time. I can throw the iron down, uh, gold down to you. Uh, yes, that would be fine. Just please hurry. Uh, uh, oh, I missed. There you go. Oh, thank God. Okay, now this is going to take all of my Minecrafting skill. I'm, I'm just going to spectate, and in case you die, you know, I, uh, it's a good day for me. <laughs> no, I got it. Oh, thank God. The server lag nearly killed me, but it didn't. Uh, yeah, you <laughs> seem to have a horde, Kim. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed. Do I? Yes, you do. Any gift for me? <laughs> Any gift for me? You're holding diamonds, for you, you rich, rich man. Yeah, Kim. No, I, I gift for you. In good a faith. I want more than that, but hey, here. Three diamonds! My god. How, how did you get those, Kim? I found a chest with some loot. Yeah, I'm just like, uh, give, you know, so you, don't forget. Remember me, okay? <laughs> remember me. What do I have for you, Kim? Um, very little. Yeah, I don't need payment. There you go. Yeah, no, no. Take that. Maybe later. What is that? The multi shot that I'm gonna be, get sick. Okay, knock back. Yeah, that's not so bad. It's not so bad, he says. It's one of my <laughs> only two valuable possessions. All right then, Steve, I will go back and deal with my horde. Talk soon. <laughs> yeah, you gotta deal with that, Kim. Uh, yeah, talk soon. So meeting with Kim paid off. That man's full of surprises. Anyway, so it's finally time we build a base. Well, I suppose technically it'll be the third time we're living in a base. We're going to make a wonderful base, and we're going to live in it. Well, my name isn't Sneeve Burt Leonardshire Beakington the Third. You might remember I pointed out this spot a couple of days ago. It's also the spot where a couple of sheep went missing. We're gonna plant this tree because we're gonna need a lot of wood for this project. And then we're just gonna build something here. Starting off, this is going to be a little floating base, which is gonna be, you know, a little cringe. But the reason I'm doing it this way is because the zombies can climb. So it at least gives me some time to escape if they do end up chasing me. And so I spend the rest of the day basically just creating a big platform, a platform on which we will be able to do the rest of our design. I thought this trapdoor idea is a neat little trick that we might be able to utilize in case the zombies manage to climb the ladder up to this platform, but the majority of the base won't actually be up here, and instead will be down there, technically on the water. You'll see what I mean in a second. Now chopping wood is still an incredibly dangerous task. Every time I look upwards or get in between these leaves like this, uh, I feel like a zombie's gonna trap me in there and just chew me to death. So we're gonna be planting these trees near the base, and it should hopefully reduce our risk every time we need wood. Another day flew by of me just essentially randomly placing wooden blocks around. I do have a grand design in mind for this base, but for now I just need somewhere to stay. But once the sun arose, I felt like quickly popping back to the village just to double check that all of our peasants are dead. If anyone's alive at all, then capitalism can still thrive and we can get our emeralds from a Fletcher. Much to my dismay, I realized I must have left the door open when that horde attacked, and so sadly that Fletcher had died. But to my surprise, there was in fact one survivor. Young Tim Tim had apparently grown up in a prison that I had accidentally created. And indeed, inadvertently, my brutal and somewhat controversial parenting tactics had actually saved this man's life. And so after physically peeling young Tim Tim off the iPad, I was able to put a Fletcher table down and turn him into a useful man. Initially, we got the same trade that we did the first time we rolled a Fletcher, but I decided, hmm, we might be able to do better than that. And after a bit of re-rolling, indeed we managed to get the perfect trade. Sticks and arrows. We now have a way of generating sticks and also unlimited ammunition, so long as we have the cash. Now I did a little bit more modeling on the house, and then come the evening I thought it a good idea to finally do some enchanting. Enchanting's probably my favorite part of this game. I don't really know why. I don't know, there's something about it. It's like, uh, you know, increasing your efficiency just ever so slightly. Kind of nice. I decided that probably the best use of Kim's diamonds would be to make ourselves a sword and a shovel. Neither of those are going to come in handy right now, but I'm planning a trip into the city soon, and that will finish off this uh, enchanting station. There's plenty of books in town, and to get our level 30 enchants, we need a few more of them. In order to use that mending book, we'll want a diamond sword with Smite 5 on it, which is the best weapon we'll have against the zombies, and that will of course achieve part one of the master plan. I did happen to notice that I could get Smite 2 on this regular iron sword, which will definitely do for now. Our uber zombie killing innator will have to wait, but this little iron baby will keep us engorged in the meantime. Now, much to my surprise, that evening I was visited by a Norwegian. Help me, I'm infected. Oh God. Kim, I, I don't have anything to save you. 
More gold? I have, I have, I have no gold. I, I, I don't think. I don't think I have e even have one. Luckily for Kim, although I didn't have any gold on me, I did have a suspicion that I knew where some was. I found this ravine just the other day when Rakrush died, and I noticed that it's quite big and there are plenty of ores here. And so with a little bit of luck, we might be able to save Kim's life. Yes, that's... Oh my god, there's some gold! This is absolutely bollocks, by the way. When I need gold, I need to travel to the ends of the earth and back. And when Kim needs gold, we find it in two seconds. I got enough, Kim. You got enough already? Yes. Oh, what am I doing? I, I just need one cobblestone and coal or something. Okay, we got a furnace, Kim. Kim, don't panic. Oh, oh my goodness. Sneak to the rescue, huh? <laughs> you saved me before, Kim. The debt is repaid. Ooh. Eat it, oh. eat it, Kim. Yes, I can see normally. <laughs> Yay, Kim has been saved from death. After Kim had been spared, we decided to stick around a little bit more and grab some more materials. I managed to find another little node of gold right here. So saving Kim wasn't entirely pointless. I'm also looking forward to doing more enchanting, so I grabbed some more blue stuff as that'll come in handy. It's quite easy to run out of lapis when you need a few of them for every single enchant you're gonna be doing. So having some extra is gonna be nice. Also, for some reason, the crayfish down here are emo. Anyway, we'd saved Kim's life. And now, of course, it was time for Kim to show his gratitude to us. <laughs> okay, well, there he goes. And he's l left the horde at my house, which is terribly kind. One of the more interesting things I've noticed about this base is that the zombies seem to completely ignore the fact that I have a ladder right there and instead just shamble towards me wading in the water. This is particularly fun because there are some sharks around my base and they keep on attacking the zombies as they get into the water. I decided to name this shark here Smiley. Get him Smiley. Yeah. Nibble on these guys. I decided that on day 25, we're gonna quickly pop into the city, do some shopping, and then we're gonna come home and do something about this base. The UFO base is uh, kind of annoying me. My plan for what to do with the base is quite simple. We're going to grab a buttload of sand, and then we're just gonna fill in this beach here, and then build some kind of defensive structure on top of the sand. With the current house base being kind of the top of whatever we build. Quickly nipped into the city and managed to extract this man from the gene pool. Okay, what the hell is with the seagulls? I'm in the middle of an office building and there's seagulls out here like they work in accounting. Hang on, I'll transfer your call. I managed to find the cheeky little books that I wanted and also managed to stumble across something else which was very nice. Oh, hello. Righty tighty. Very good. Now, I should mention that not all of this was found terribly easily. I did find myself in the odd spot of mild peril from time to time. Uh. Oh boy. Didn't enjoy that. But after a wee while, having gathered what I wanted to, and even gathering up some of this birch, which I wasn't planning on getting, but may as well, I decided to head home. Off we go. Time to go home. Lovely jubbly. Good day, sir. I mean, good evening. Ah, good, good, good. A mighty haul. We got wood, we got an apple, which was very surprising, and we have the books that we need to enchant our many magical items that we desire. Quickly slapped on the rest of the bookcases we needed, and then decided to enchant my diamond shovel. Unfortunately, I didn't quite get what I wanted. I also wanted a uh, unbreaking enchantment on this, but that do be how it is sometimes. In the morning, upon spying the considerable amount of disenfranchised peasantry outside my front door, I elected to quickly nip back to the village to buy myself some more ammunition since I ran out of arrows the other day. Much to my dismay though, what was supposed to be just a quick nip to the shops ended up becoming a fight for all of humanity. As for some reason, every time I come to this village now, I'm swarmed by hundreds of zombies. It could be the mutations, or it could indeed be partially due to the fact that I lured a horde here a few weeks ago, but that is what it is. <laughs> Has this man wielding a dagger with no arms? Undeath leads to powers beyond human imagination. Things got so bad that during the evening I had to hole up in a house and get a little safe spot working. But this is fine, we need the XP anyway, and could be a good idea to thin out this horde if we're gonna keep coming back here. I am very much looking forward to collecting the XP in the morning though, and we can use it to enchant additional things. Hmm. 
And so I spent the rest of the evening simply stabbing poor people, I mean zombies. Annoyingly though, interacting with the peasantry has its downsides, as by the time I wanted to head home, I suddenly realized that I now have the plague. But it's nothing that a good cup of English breakfast and a nice biscuit can't cure. I utilized some of the levels we just gained to make myself a new sword. This one's not exactly maxed out, but it is very nice. And for now, that's all we need. I also happened to buy this, which is a archer's table from our fletching friend. But I don't really know what it is or what it does. So for now, it's just going to be used as a coffee table. Managed to annihilate one of these bastards. Yes. And the morning of the next day started off with the best of intentions. I really wanted to do some work on the base, but sadly, thanks to all of these drowned zombies, yes, that's another zombie type. The main distinction between them and regular zombies is that they can swim in the water, and they can also spawn with additional weapons. For example, this pillock over here is throwing a trident at me. Very unpolite. I got him. But yes, anyway, pretty much spent the entire day fighting off these regular zombies and the drowned ones. Even in the evening, I was still stabbing away. The next day, however, I was actually able to remove myself from the warm comforts of home and into the dark, perilous unknown. That is to say, I went outside and managed to collect a bunch of sand. Once I had enough sand in my pants, it was then time to begin the beaching process. That is the process of creating a beach. Go away. Progress was, uh, slow to say the least. I'm not terribly good at these, uh, arduous grinds. And making it even more painful was the odd zombie would attack me now and again. So as inefficient and painfully slow as this process was, it was made even more so by the fact that poor people wouldn't leave me alone. Didn't get as much of it done as I wanted during the day, but it's at least a start. You might be able to tell that this has somewhat of a shape to it than before. Uh, but, uh, it is incredibly slow. The following day, I nipped back to the shops in the hopes of gaining myself a few more emeralds. But my god, every time I come here, I really have to fight my way through. I'm here to trade. Do any of you know where the PS5s are kept? And we're here to see Francis the Fletcher. Hello, Francis. How are we? Don't worry. I'm back at it again. Ready for more Emmys. It occurred to me as I sailed towards my cringe and entirely hideous base that maybe my current plan needs adjustment. With the zombies mutating every few days, it's perhaps not a good idea to build a defensive structure out of an entirely flammable material. And so upon seeing the peasantry once again in revolt, I decided that today is going to be the day that we go get ourselves some less destructible building materials. Also, yes, this is pretty much what my front door looks like every single morning. There's, there's a lot of zombies at the minute. I decided I'd jump into the ravine again, just in case it came across any gold while I was looking for extra materials. And happy days, I did. What I really needed was more stone. And luckily, I found plenty down here. I was also hoping for more gold while I was down here, as we don't have a lot of golden apples right now. But the stone was going to be very handy for the build I had in mind. When I finally got to breathe the poisonous fresh air once again, I had several stacks of cobblestone to my name, and it was now the night of day 31. How time flies when you're having fun. Spent a small amount of time working on the shape of the beach, but the rest of the day I spent on our first defensive measure. It's going to be a good old fashioned trench. Unfortunately, these selfish pricks are just walking around it like my feelings don't matter. But in good news, my brain is bigger than theirs and I know how to manipulate Minecraft AI mechanics for my benefit. I don't know why, but for some reason, when there's trapdoors here, they'll just walk straight in. I spent the rest of the evening putting in a glass ceiling for some reason. And no, I don't really know why. This wasn't meant to be part of the build. I just thought it might look good. Uh, it didn't. Listen, the logic to my building has mystified scholars for decades. While I was doing some re-rolling on the old enchanting table, I found I had Smite 4 available to me. So I decided to enchant the book with this, and with a little bit of slapping things together on the anvil. We had, in many ways, a very powerful stabbing device. I also then recognized that for some reason in my inventory I had an enchanting book that had Unbreaking 3 on it. Sometimes you get enchanting books from those loot boxes and they get automatically sent into your inventory. But regardless of when we got it, the point is we have it. So now we can make ourselves an even better sword. Look at this puppy! Oh yeah! And now that we have Snorb's stabbing device, we now have completed the first step of the master plan. Next step, we need to find some friends. And for those of you who watch anime like I do, you'll know that this is easier said than done. The following morning, I said hello to the plebeians, and then I decided to go out and do some homesteading. One of the things I'm suffering from most at the moment is lack of good nutritional food. 
Bread is nice, but it does get a little boring after two weeks. I'd noticed that there were some cows and sheep and things wandering around, so it sounds like a good idea to me to trap some of them and forcefully breed them with one another. Uh, probably could have phrased that better. My god. Just let me build. I just want a fence. Is that too much to ask? Lads, please. Just a fence, lads, please. It's only a fence. Surely it does not offend your zombie ways. Damn homeowners association. What I want to do with my land, my business. No, <laughs> I just want to build a fence. <laughs> Why? Can't a man build a fence? Oh God, the HOA is on their way. They heard about my fence building ways. They've come to put a stop to it. Oh my God. Okay, this is getting a bit much. I decided to flee and abandon my fence project. It certainly wasn't going to be happening today with all these people around. The turtle! Save me, turtle! I decided that the highway is probably going to be a safe spot to be, at least until the horde stops, <laughs> and ended up extremely satisfied uh, by these apparent British zombies, which have rather formally and politely formed a queue for me. Careful now. Single file, lads, please. Maintain a orderly queue. We Brits love queuing. It's a national sport. Snore of stabbing devices. Putting in some, some good work. They're all gone. Blimey. I'm a machine. You see, these, these men here, they're not queuing at all. This is just more of a free-for-all. Queuing is the basis of Western society, and you've all failed. Unfortunately, we lost all our daylight to escaping the horde, but we did at least manage to accomplish one thing that day. I found some emu eggs on the highway. And look at this little guy. Here we go. Wow. Wait, so are you my friend? No, you're just a random emu. Okay, that now lives on the highway. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna call you Percy. How's it going, Percy? You're making incredibly adult noises. That was a terrifying noise for a, such a tiny, tiny guy. All right, Percy, I'll uh, see you later. Good luck. Uh, if you get hungry, I don't know. Good luck. Once I got home, I put a few more trapdoors on the trench and found out that it does indeed work. Though again, I don't fully understand why. What I do know, however, is that I'm going to need some kind of sanitation system. I need some way of getting rid of these zombies once they're in the hole. Because right now, there's too many of them and they're kind of walking on top of one another and climbing over. I'm glad this is working though. It's kind of like a little XP farm in a way, so long as I keep stabbing. After testing old Trenchy Wenchy, I decided to open some loot boxes that I'd managed to get, and I got something incredibly interesting. What the hell is this thing? The best gift is to go home. What? Oh, really? That's cool, it sends you to the... That's awesome, that's a really good thing to have. It sends you to the spawn point. Turns out that loot box was actually stacked. I got some fire charges, which can be used to make these special TNTs. And then I also got a bunch of golden nuggets. And as it happens, that's the amount that I need to make a golden ingot and also a spare golden apple. So now we have two golden apples. Oh, it's nice to finally not only have one in reserve. Uh, of course, and immediately infected as well. Uh, I just made that golden apple, you scum. Utilizing the strategy we figured out last time, I decided to use my infection time to pop into the city. Found absolutely nout in the city though. It's kind of annoying. But what I did happen to find is a couple of these nice little iron bars. I haven't quite told you what I'm gonna build yet, but you'll be seeing it soon, and we need iron bars for it. Small adjustment to the strategy we used last time though, instead of having to walk all the way home, we can use our handy little vanity mirror. And that saves us doing cardio, which is a scam anyway. Well, we didn't find anything, but it was a good strategy. It wasn't exactly a brave strategy, but it was a good strategy. I'm not really here to impress anyway, I'm just here to survive. If I wanted to impress, I'd... Show you my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. What I lack in conventional attractiveness, however, I make up for in XP. And in fact, it looks like we can get fortune on this pickaxe, which will heavily increase the amount of iron and other such things we get in the future. So that's gonna be lovely. Now I was getting a bit annoyed with all of the noise that these poor people were making. So while having a look into possible solutions, I came across this happy little fellow. It's a grenade. 
<laughs> Unfortunately though, it seemed to have an underwhelming effect on my headache. We could make some of these dynamites, but we don't have much paper, so let's hope that it's useful. Oh, there we go. So yeah, for some reason the second one didn't explode at all and just bonked this zombie on the mouth. So, I, I mean, we only threw two and it was a 50% success rate, so that's not very good. And we're also out of paper, so we can't make any more. Deciding to take the more personal approach, I ended up getting infected again. Uh. And while continuing my extermination process, this cow apparently decided it didn't want to live anymore. Oh, well, I didn't want to do that. What was I supposed to do? The idiot was just standing there. And unfortunately, stabbing that cow brings the total number of cows that live near my house to one. So now we can't breed them. Once my screen turned green again, I of course went back into the city looking for more apples, but aside from some iron bars and some books, I came home empty-handed. Oh, wait a minute, that's not entirely true. I also found this book that has looting on it, so we can chuck that on the sword. But unfortunately, we had to use our last reserve golden apple, as we didn't find any in the city. And thus ended day 35. Now, we need to have a quick chat. Uh, it shames me to admit that the next footage I have is from day 38. Yes, I skipped over three days. Basically, my recording software updated, and it wasn't doing what I told it to, and I only realized an hour into recording that I wasn't actually recording. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's a real ball twister. So anyway, here we are on day 38. I found nine diamonds, and this is going to physically pain me. It's going to physically pain me. We will get rid of these diamonds. I'm gonna keep the axe, because I did legitimately find those diamonds. I can show you the mine and everything. But as I got most of them off camera, we'll keep the axe, but we'll get rid of those and uh, hopefully get the rest on camera. Ah, uh, my sweet diamonds. <laughs> I didn't think to mention this at the time, but also when I'd found those diamonds, I had also gathered a bunch of lava and I'd been using the lava to create a stone platform underneath my base. Also, yes, these chaps are trapped in my trench. They basically fell in over the past three days and I haven't thought to remove them. Honestly, they've been incredibly helpful in dealing with the zombies that fall in as well. We've actually kind of uh, killed two birds with one stone by them falling in. I elected to wander off and chop some more trees with the hopes of getting a bunch more emeralds. My initial hope was that I'd be able to hire some of those guys that have fallen in the trench, but this is incredibly unlikely. And uh, here's me explaining why. One of the things that happened is uh, a lot of zombies fell into that trench and the, the lads in there were pretty much fighting for their very lives. <laughs> Here's the hundreds of zombies, because they can't get out of there. So they were just trapped in there with the zombies and uh, I was standing above them. I was helping them, I was actually stabbing at the zombies, but a lot of them died and the two that are left in there have leveled up like eight times. <laughs> Hello, Fred. I have returned with food and water. Not really. How are we doing? I traded over a whole stack of oak logs for emeralds, but upon checking out exactly how much it would cost to hire the people who had fallen in my trench, I quickly realized that, uh, yeah, these guys are definitely too expensive for me. He costs 133 emeralds? What the hell? And you there, 51 emeralds. There was a patrol of like six of them in here. So the, the four of them have perished. These are the survivors. <laughs> Look, he's killed 22 guys. Patrol leader has killed 60 zombies? My god. But yeah, anyway, so these guys are pretty much unhirable. The, the danger involved and the amount of time it takes me to get emeralds, there's no way we're going to be able to afford these expensive individuals. And so we'll just keep them in the trench. Kind of like expensive lawn ornaments that aren't mine. You see, this has actually turned into quite an effective zombie trap. Watch, he'll uh, amble over, he'll fall down. There he goes. And then the men inside will simply stab him to death. It works very well. On day 39, I mainly just continued with the lava thing. This is mainly just to create a stone platform on which we can build the rest of the base. I then received some rather interesting information. Yes, as it turns out, Fruitless is in fact alive. Are we going to try and track him down and find him? No. The other thing I did on day 39 though was I got started on one of the two pillars which are going to form the gateway 
to our base. It may surprise you, but my intention is not to leave a pathway for the zombies to just walk around my trench and hurt my feelings. So the plan is to have these kind of rustic looking cobblestone towers on either side of the trench. And then we'll also surround the base with additional towers and iron bars. Once the first tower was tall enough so that they couldn't walk around my trench, I then got started on the second tower. Also, I apologize for the Shrek vision. While I was building, some dickhead came along and licked me. Luckily, I have one more golden apple. And once daylight arrived again, I decided it's about time we get rid of this stupid golden apple problem. It's getting annoying and repetitive. A bit like me. And so I managed to resolve the problem by finding a nice and juicy underwater ravine and finding more gold than I would know what to do with. Since I have fortune on my pickaxe, of course this multiplies into even more gold. And thankfully afterwards we shouldn't have to worry about stupid golden apples ever again. And this turned out to be an incredibly intelligent decision. Because by the next day, the next mutation arrived. There were actually two new mutations that arrived on day 41. The zombies work at the gym has once again paid off and they are now slightly faster than before. And the second mutation is a little more physiological, shall we say. What the? Yes, introducing the bloat. A rather rotund but entirely dangerous chap, he has a few unique abilities to his name. In addition to the ability to be able to smash a kebab faster than you can say that's not a kebab, that's a baby, he also boasts quite high strength and intelligence, and also has the ability to toss other zombies. He has one final ability, which is increased volatility. What the hell is that? Oh my god, I was so taken aback by our rather rotund friend. <laughs> oh my god, he's so big. What is this? Also, how are you out? What the heck? Are you kidding me? No, the recruits are out. Damn it. Leroy, how are we doing? Naturally, of course, the most dangerous and entirely rude thing about the bloats is that they leave gaping holes in the defenses you've worked so hard to build. What the? Oh my god, okay, so that's that guy. Ah! Oh. Oh my god. Okay, this is becoming problematic. I'm getting mad. Please no more explodey men. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not getting mad, but I will be. This continues. I spent the rest of day 41 building my towers and filling in the holes that the bloats had made. Leroy, what the hell is wrong with you? Also, this crow is not tamed to me. It's just spinning on the spot. Something's very wrong with that crow. On day 42, I attempted to finally use that fence I built like 10 days ago and make myself some nicer, tastier sandwiches. And while I was luring the sheep over, a bunch of recruits just suddenly turned up. Honestly, I don't know where these guys came from. I'm kind of scared. What if I can recruit one of these guys? Hey, you. 16. Too expensive. Nine. You're hired. No, don't fight your own friend. He will destroy you. M my my man. Oh God, damn it! <coughs> well, I was right. He did destroy him. But now I'm down emeralds. You you absolute scumbag. I was robbed. I was absol absolutely scammed just now. As painfully slow as it was, eventually I had two sheep in my pen. In here, my friend. Good. Ah. Uh. Uh. You know, lads, just because I now have the ability to make golden apples, I can't make infinite of them. Oh, oh yeah, the mutation. The mutations made them faster. That's why I'm getting infected all the time. Ah, see? In good news, however, a new cow has wandered into my area. So all we need to do is lure this one into the pen and then... Why are you laughing? It's not a funny situation. Guess we'll breed the mm. stupid sheep then. Anyway, since we fell for that Bitcoin scam, we now have to get more Emmys, so let's chop some trees. Now I'm chopping this birch tree because I have a theory that birch always grows taller than oak wood. And so if we're going to be planting things around the base, it may be better to not plant oak. But we'll test it and see if we can do some science and find out. It occurred to me the following morning that I should probably make my trench bigger to allow the bloats to fall in. That guy just clapped that guy. Oh, and he's wearing all the armor that the guys have dropped. This guy's a this guy's a menace. Is that Bow Man? You wouldn't happen to be Bow Man, would you? Oh no, these are the recruits. Patrol. 64. Good god. This economy. We're gonna chop this boy. And then we're gonna do some science. But I have a theory, okay? Here's the theory. Plug the two birch down. And I have a theory that those two birch will grow taller than these two oaks. Actually, we should move them further apart, shouldn't we? So that they have room to grow. For science! Okay. 
as a regular short tree. Yeah, slightly taller. Okay, let's try again. Hello? Okay. Oh no! Science, you failed again! Oh! Oh no. The scientific method has actually failed us. <laughs> We've got one that, uh, the one, one that uh, meets our hypothesis and one that counteracts it. Oh dear. And sadly, with these four trees, we do not have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Although I've barely ever seen an oak tree this big. See, this is what we call bias, people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why this has turned into a statistics lesson. I'm chopping down the, the, the oak tree that does not conform to my beliefs. After manipulating my data, I quickly headed home and noticed that this fellow is on the cheap cheap. Nine! Hello! You're hired. Come with me, patrol. I need to give him a new name. What should I call him? Um... Cheesy. I'm gonna call him Cheesy. I gave Cheesy some food and as much armor as I had available to me. I really didn't want him to die in the same way that Recrush did. I'm getting sick of being lonely. Get him, Cheesy! Oh, he, he has a terrible weapon, I just realized. What if we could give Cheesy... Can we give Cheesy this? Get him, Cheesy. Yeah, there you go. Now you got a weapon to stab with. But now I don't have a weapon, so I'm gonna have to be careful. Get him, Cheesy! Yeah! Cheesy's a beast now. Once I had finished my shopping and ended up with a juicy 23 emeralds, I headed home to make Cheesy a new weapon. And after a bit of finagling, we managed to get Smite 4 on an iron sword. Yes! Beautiful. Who, me? Kim! Sneeve! Kim! How Hello, Kim! How the hell did you get here? Uh, oh my goodness, you gotta save me, I'm infected! Oh dear. That's a tor- oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Kim. But I only have 12 apples, and they're all for me. No, it, 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 the apples, uh, I don't need apples, I need the gold. Well, I don't even have that much gold anymore, Kim. I only have six gold, and it's all for me. Okay, there's two gold in here, Kim. There's four gold in there, actually. Oh, Kim! Who's talking, Petro? Thank you, Steve, for uh, showing me where the chest with the golden apples I... Was. Oh, no. Cheesy! What is happening here? This is a mess. You have so many zombies. I know, this happens every day, Kim. This is, it's every day, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's not been bad for me at all. Oh, really? So uh, you have... uh, so, something about me, then. I see, you see, I built this trench here, which works wonders. Wait, is that you, Cheesy? Cheesy, there you are. Okay, there's my boy. Who are you talking to right now? Cheesy, he's, he's my recruit. I have a bunch of people. I see that you have people fighting in the waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're, they're not they're not mine. Most of them are unemployed. They're just... Oh, they're he unemployed? Yeah, they're... they're, they're Free labor? They're, yeah, they're just here. They just they just spawned here. But one of them is recruited, and his name is Cheesy. Here we go. This will this will hopefully solve the problem. Okay, uh, you should... Oh, my God. Yourself. Okay, I'm infected. Great. Ah! <laughs> they're so fast uh, now, Kim. Yes, they're... Oh, God. Yeah. Your community is following. Oh, Steve, there's so many after you. I know! Yeah. You, what gonna, have you done, I... Kim? You've brought them all to me again! <laughs> I didn't know such thing. You did? Kim jumps up, he's like, uh, Sneeve, by the way, I'm infected. Oh, yeah, and all of the zombies in the world are behind <laughs> me. Okay, then the numbers are dropping, Kim. We're getting there. I will, I, I will, this... I will watch your back and pick up the experience points. <laughs> yeah, I bet you will, Kim. You scab? Get him, Cheesy! Uh, but I'm instant killing them. Good. Good, good. Yeah. Kim, I'm so happy for you. Please kill more of them. <laughs> Cheesy, for the love of God, man. Oh. Why am I carrying a shield? Oh, I forgot I'm infected. Why have I been doing that? I never even used it. I'm just holding it. I quickly swapped out Cheesy's weapon for the new iron sword we just made. And by God, both of us need these swords. There are so many zombies right now. Ever since Kim arrived, there was just wave after wave of zombified men coming my way. There were literally hundreds of them, and they were fast, and they do a lot of damage. Eh. Get them, Cheesy. Oh, fat people, fat people! Ah, yes. All it took was one mistake. I stood a tiny bit too close to the trench, and a big zombie and a few others managed to ramble me. Understandably, Kim was very emotional that this had happened. <laughs> no! No, no, dear! No, they're killing Sneeze's friend! They're killing Sneeze! They managed to cross over! No, 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 no! Kim? No! Your, your friend is... No, your friend is alive! 
Kim, Why? I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm just disappointed. <laughs> How is it my fault? It's... <laughs> I, I was I big didn't... chillin', my dude, until you turned up. Kim, you were infected. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> Steve, you can talk about this. Uh, you were infected, Kim, and now everything has gone wrong no, for me. Your friend is gonna kill me. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> cheesy, cheesy. Calm down, cheesy. How many emeralds do you have, Kim? Um, I, I currently. <laughs> get him, cheesy. No, get no, 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 get him. <laughs> get no, no, the man no, 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 who has no, no. killed me. Actually, I stay up here. Well, at least dying cured my infection. Yeah, I mean, you got, that's a good way of looking at it. <laughs> you need to show me your base now, Kim. You've destroyed mine. Oh, you know where mine is. The building. I was, y you stayed there. You told me you were moving. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, it was hard to move. Kim decided to go home suddenly, and so I had to spend the rest of my day repairing all the damage that the horde Kim had brought had wrought. I was also annoyed for a second reason, which is that apparently when I died, I'd managed to lose my magic mirror. And dear God, I was loving that thing. I noticed there was a new recruit in the village, so I decided to see how much he costed. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh dear. I may have caused that. Sorry about that. During that night, I got to see Cheesy in action. Get him, Cheesy. Get him. Yes! Cheesy is a beast! And the following day was largely just spent gathering materials for building and doing a bit of gardening. Leroy's in the sky overseeing the project. Good. And in the evening, I had a quick peek at Cheesy's stats. This man's already got over 30 health to his name and has killed 80-something zombies. Since my trench had been largely destroyed by the damage caused by some bloats, I figured maybe this time, instead of restoring it to the way it was, we'll extend it by one block. And hopefully that'll mean the bloats can't cross it. Ah, there's nothing like a good trench to keep the Walmart goblins at bay. Now, the previous mine where I'd found all those diamonds and such was in the ravine, and I wanted something a lot closer to my base, so I decided to hollow out this hill right here, as I knew I would need a lot of cobblestone, and if we need additional ores in the future, then this'll be the place to go. I decided to feed and shear my walking cardigans, and unfortunately then I received some bad news. Kim has returned. I've come to the realization that we need to work together, so here, payment. Payment for what? Destro killing me? I'll take for it. For being my, my friend and we survive this together. <laughs> to have my back when I need you the most. Uh, fr friends are a loose term. How much, how much time did they even give you there? That was a lot, wasn't it? That was a lot, yeah, that was... All right, all right, Kim, all is forgiven. <laughs> yeah, can I get the apple then? Yeah, okay, yep, you can have an apple. Thank you. I was at my final stage. Annoyingly though, although Kim had managed to solve my diamond starvation problem, he'd also brought another horde back with him. I swear to God, I am going to stab Kim. Well, not really, but I'm definitely gonna get some revenge. There's so many here, Kim. I'm now able to enchant things. You, you do this every time, Kim. Kim, be careful. Yeah, now I'm just going backtracking where you've been and killed. <laughs> just stealing all this loot. The zombies were absolutely relentless and did not stop coming for as long as Kim was here. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why didn't I just banish Kim? And let me tell you, I tried, but no matter how many times I said, well, it's getting late, he just wouldn't leave. You bring the hordes here. I've been infected three, three times. Jeezy has been absolutely, like, fought ragged. He's, he's, he hasn't slept in days. <laughs> that poor man. I, do you have a second bed that, we, that I can sleep in? But at the very least, it was an extraordinarily good source of experience. It's kind of crazy that I died just before, and now I'm back to 44 levels within one day. And I have some big plans for these levels. But there are so many big boys around here, Kim. Yeah, 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 yeah. You sounded like you were about to start rapping, Kim. I was getting ready for the flows. <laughs> <laughs> Alright then, uh, we sleep then. We sleep and in the morning I'm out of here. <laughs> You're such a good house guest, Kim. I'm out of here. <laughs> Let me leave. I can't wait to get home. You're not supposed to exactly. say that, Kim. You're just supposed to say, well, better hit the old dusty trail. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, though, having eaten all my thin mints and consumed all my golden apples, Kim took the hint and finally decided to leave. I see. Uh, it seems to you have a lot on your hands, so. Oh, uh, okay. I bid uh, you uh, goodbye. I'll see. You. Oh. 
It's just like Kim, isn't it, to leave me with all these zombies. Luckily, zombies aren't exactly known for their logical reasoning, and most of them managed to get stuck in this hole here, so I was able to kill them rather quickly. After dealing with the consequences of having friends, I then had a chat with this wandering trader who had fallen in my trench, and found that he actually sells something useful. Indeed, this may be the first time in all of Minecraft history, but he sold me a jungle sapling. And this thing should have a hell of a lot of wood to its name, much more than the stupid oak or birch we've been working with. Leaving that tree to grow, I then started on the external perimeter. They already don't really swim over and get onto the stone platform, but occasionally the odd drown does spawn nearby and throw tridents at me. And I don't enjoy that, so we're putting up some fences. This here fence will keep the undesirables off my property. Be them the undead, or, uh, Kim. I decided to put some lava down in the trench. I was hoping that this would help with uh, clearing out some of the zombies. And indeed, it seemed to do the trick on the smaller ones, but it had an unintended but additionally awesome effect on the big ones. Yes, after that chap blew up, I went to inspect the amount of damage he'd done to my trench. That amount of damage is now. You see, Minecraft is not particularly good at calculating the amount of damage done to blocks if one of those blocks is a liquid, such as lava or water. What it means is that if we place down some lava or some water as one is about to explode, we can reduce the amount of damage it does to our defenses. And this is a good discovery, due to the fact that those bloated bastards are the main thing causing me problems and headaches right now. Because I got curious, I had a quick peek at cheesy stats, and by god those hordes Kim brought have leveled this man up. We've got an Avengers level threat on our hands. Level 9 with 52 health and 300 kills. Hide your girlfriends, people, because cheesy will kill them. At the beginning of day 50, the zombies have received another mutation. They've received universal increases to all of their stats, and they've also developed a new ability. Zombies have a chance to spawn with the ability to break blocks. They can't do it all the time, and not every zombie can do it but it is possible, which is wonderful, isn't it? It makes me happy, and I'm definitely not paranoid. Yes, similar to what Taco Bell does to my insides, the zombies will soon be tearing this place apart. I decided to spend all of day 50 fishing, as salmon is a very good food source, and our sheep farm is not yet big enough to harvest. You know, every time he eats, I think about Fruitless. I wonder how Fruitless is doing. He certainly ain't eating. Oh. Please don't throw that squire, I'm trying to fish. Now what I planned on using all those levels we got the other day for is making Cheesy some new gear. Unfortunately this one's a little too good, so I'm having that for myself, but I'll give Cheesy the second one. I ended up giving Cheesy some fire protection and blast protection, because that should help against the big guys and also the burnies. Now it's about time we talk once again about the master plan. You see, I plan on getting revenge on Kim for his many crimes. However, in doing so, I also don't want to be a prick. So I'm not just gonna kill Kim or completely annihilate him. No, no, no. Instead, we're just going to destroy everything Kim loves. I'm going to procure some explosive devices and just cheekily create a few massive gaping holes in the sides of his defenses. But for that, of course, we need to find his base. And we also need some of these puppies because we need paper for dynamite. You see, Kim is a builder by trade. In terms of my own defenses, however, I recently noticed that the Bernies dropped these magma blocks, and it's occurred to me that this may come in handy. You see, look at this man. He's cosplaying as a Hot Pocket. Wonderful. Let's put some more of these down. Now to continue building my base, I needed a lot more cobblestone. And one way that I could potentially get it instead of risking my life is the use of a cobblestone generator. With lava and water, we can create cobblestone. Now, I haven't actually done this before, but I believe I know how it works. Hmm. Now it's about that time that I noticed maybe it's time to go on a little trip. And I couldn't think of a better time than right now to go and see if I can find where Kim's base is. So I quickly threw an enchantment on my chest plate and then headed out into the great outdoors. Obviously the first place we were going to check would be the city. That's where we saw him last and he told us that he hasn't moved. So he should still be there. And also he's apparently just tamed an elephant. So him living in the city seems incredibly unlikely. Now on the first day I actually went to the wrong city, so surprise surprise Kim wasn't living there. I also found this very interesting looking building, but I had a look inside and there was nothing there. Just a whole lot of disappointment and sadness. Cool building though, I will admit. And it did at the very least give me a vantage point to see if I could see where Kim's base is. I didn't see Kim's base, but I did find some hot stuff, which is amazing because I recently lost some of mine. And at the beginning of the next day, I found the correct city where Kim had been staying. There did seem to be signs of life, so it was possible that Kim actually hadn't moved, and had been telling the truth when he said he hadn't moved. 
I took a quick detour from my search to quickly nab all of this spruce wood that was just sitting around in town, as spruce wood is a fantastic building material, and also the trees tend to grow quite tall. Afterwards, I finally found that building where Kim had been staying, and apart from this chap who politely kissed me on the mouth, the building definitely had no inhabitants, and clearly hadn't had for quite a long time. And so now I was at a bit of a crossroads. I really don't know where Kim would have gone, and it's going to be quite difficult for me to find him. Honestly, my best chance is going to be finding him at night, because I might be able to see the lights for whatever base he has. I searched for a good portion of the night, but then happened to get quite lucky. I noticed there was some bamboo sticking out of the ground. And bamboo doesn't normally grow here. I think we found Kim's house. The man who claimed he had a lot of bamboo is bamboozled himself by giving away his position. That was almost clever. Uh, Kim! Kim, I've, I've brought a few friends over. I hope that's alright. I'm coming, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm coming in, Kim. Oh, close the door, close the door, what are you doing? Uh, I... Oh, sorry, I lost it. Uh, Sneeve! Here we go. Hang on, I got it. <laughs> there we Crazy go. Crazy man, you fo- Kim, 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 Oh! Don't get stabbed, Kim. How are you doing? Welcome. Thank you! I've been looking out- Looking for you for- Oh, Kim, they're, uh... Is, they normally do that? Yeah, the wall is not tall enough. Oh Let's my Let's get stabbing, goodness. Kim. Add them. Oh, Do you have a horde or something? Me? <laughs> no, no, they're digging. They're digging. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, they they certainly seem to be doing that. Oh, look, you've got a friend. Them. Patrol. That's yeah, a terrible a, name. Yeah, I got him. <laughs> I haven't got to run through that part. Oh, sneak. Don't worry, Kim. I got him. Oh my God. I can't believe you, you have like a nice little home, Kim, and your, your kangaroos keep on burning themselves. It's quite hilarious. I, I've been searching for you for like three days. I'm not even kidding. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> oh my god, they are digging. Oh, oh Sneeve. There's a couple of uh, really bad. large fellows over here as well. Oh my god. They're all on fire. Yes, that's your fault, Kim. I just brought them here. You set them on fire. Oh, this is a mess. This is a mess. Okay, I've almost got him, Kim. Okay, I got him. Oh, no, no. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, sneeze, oh, sneeze, sneeze. Uh, Kim, I think you might want to plug that hole. Yes. Oh, no, no. Oh, my goodness. I, I tried to collect blocks here. Don't worry, don't worry Kim. There's another. Oh, I got him. Oh, oh my God. I'm going to die. Don't, look. No, no, don't fight them. Don't stop fighting them. <laughs> my wall, okay. my beautiful wall. Oh, sorry, Kim. Oh god. No, 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 no. Don't. Now, Kim, it's lovely to see you, but I really must be going. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> what happened? You saw one. Okay, I thought you died there for a second. No, no, I'm alive. Just, just about. I felt kind of bad having destroyed a bunch of Kim's walls. This wasn't my intention. I wanted to do this with explosives, not with explosive oh. zombies. And I wanted my revenge to be much more impactful. Oh. There we go. There's nothing to worry about. You. Kim, you. And this may surprise you, but I also didn't want to die to a kangaroo. Yes, reviewing the footage, it seemed like one of my attacks accidentally clipped Kim, and this caused one of his kangaroos to go buck nutty on my ass. Oh boy, five hearts. And I've got to make it how many more days? Where even was his house? It was... Not that bridge. So it must be... There must be another bridge... Wait, is that right? Even the greatest of explorers at times will find themselves lost. I mean, Columbus famously thought he'd arrived at India when he'd actually arrived at Northern America. And me, well, I'm not even a famous explorer, so it took me quite some time to find my way back to Kim's. Okay, there's an efficiency four trouble here. Now, Kim, I'm oh. not gonna lie to you. I, <laughs> I am not altogether stoked with your kangaroo right now. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry about that. Is this the offender? Oh, my goodness. I think I have some strong words to say to you. <laughs> Be careful, he has a katana. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that last time. Is this, is this mine? Yeah, I'm trying to gather your stuff. Oh, thank you. 
That was so kind. Yes, luckily for me, Kim had gone out of his way to make sure that all of my stuff had survived and didn't despawn. Although I must say he had done it in a very unhinged way. He'd just thrown my items into random chests, and so we had to go on a little treasure hunt. You need to make these these walls a little higher, Kim. Either that or put trenches around the outside. That's actually a much quicker no, way of doing it. Okay, I've, do I've made the trenches already. I was already doing that. I'm currently work working on making walls taller and extending extending them out, but then you came. Excellent. Everything was going according to plan. <laughs> then you came. <laughs> Luckily, we managed to find most of the things that I had dropped when I died. Unfortunately, I did lose a couple of things again, but that's kind of one of the risks of dying, I suppose. Unfortunately, while we were looking for all of my things, the zombies had gathered outside the gates. No! My, 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 my troll died! Your what? Your troll? You got killed by the burning zombies. You had a troll? P a pa patrol, patrol, my villager, my recruit. Oh, oh. My soldier, my soldier. Yeah, how did he die? He said the burning zombies got him. Oh dear. Thank you, Squire. What about arrows? I had like, I don't know, 50 arrows or something? Oh yeah, that, I probably did not prioritize that. Okay, well, Actually, I did. Never mind. Here, here's some arrows you can, I can share. Huzzah! Oh, Kim. It almost makes dying worthwhile. What have we got in here? Exactly. Oh, there's my iron. I'll take that. No, that's not your iron. That's my iron. I'm pretty sure, mm -hmm. Kim, that, uh... <laughs> I stayed with Kim until morning and then tried to help him with some of the zombies around his base. Due to the sheer quantity of them, we both had to flee. Payroll, that's the word. <laughs> Mind you! Oh my god. Ah, uh, he did like three quarters of my health because I only have five hearts. <laughs> but I know what, you, what you're saying now. I, I understand what you mean by when I come to you, it's only chaos. Yes! I understand now. Yes! Uh. Ah! <laughs> Look at them. Look at them chasing Kim. Oh, that guy. Kim and I made it to the highway, but the main purpose of us fleeing wasn't actually to be cowards. It was to lure the bell ends away from his base so that he could do some repairs. Once we'd accomplished our tasks, I took the hint and decided to go home. Also, as you can see, with this much health, every hit brings me closer to the sweet release of death. So I desperately needed to go home, get myself some more food, and also find myself some more powerful armor. Because I also lost a couple of pieces of armor when I died at Kim's. Which is most certainly contributing to the fact that I'm very close to death. Unfortunately, my impeccable sense of direction uh, got me lost again on the way home. And being infected, this was quite stressful. I also had no food, so I had to stop for a quick fish finger in the middle of a lake. Once I knew I was heading in the right direction, I also stumbled across this guy, who was bobbing for his dear life, but still managed to scam me out of 30 emeralds. Luckily, I did actually have quite a few emeralds on me at the time, so I decided to hire him anyway. He's an expensive man, but I'm... Uh, flush with cash right now, so we should be good. Managed to get home, but there were a bunch of large chaps hanging out outside, so I decided to go in the back entrance. Giggity. I was very infected by the time I got inside, but luckily after a quick nibble I was fine. Lovely jubbly. Oh my god, that was so stressful. <laughs> I'm making some diamond equipment, that's for damn sure. Now obviously every zombie and his grandmother threatening to send me to the Shadow Realm kinda sucks balls. So what we're going to do is we're going to enchant this puppy and then hopefully we'll get something better than what we've got. Alright, well we got fire protection which isn't terribly useful but we'll put it in here and we'll re-enchant it when we can. While I was having a quick kip I noticed that the man we just bought has died. So we just got scammed out of 30 emeralds once again. These damn suicidal employees. The next day I desperately wanted to do some building, but thanks to a hole courtesy of one of the large guys, we now have a bunch of zombies streaming into the base. Luckily, Cheesy and a bow that I have that's enchanted managed to fight them off before they were able to make a problem, but it did take the whole day. In fact, in the evening there were still quite a few near my base, so I tried to lure them closer to the village and pull them away from where my house is. It was also a good opportunity to get more fishing done and have myself some nice fish fingers. Hello? Mending? You cheeky devil. Oh, in case you've been wondering, by the way, the mending enchantment uses some of the XP you pick up to repair your items. So finding that fishing rod basically just means we can fish more. Kind of like a pyramid scheme. Big fish out here spooning us the good items. Anyway, I'm going home. Handedly, luring the zombies away from the village had worked. And so once we got home, we were actually able to have some peace and quiet and do some more building and place some more of these spicy blocks down. Also threw down those spruce saplings we collected many days ago. I don't know why I hadn't done that yet. After giving these zombies a couple of hugs, I then managed to get myself another loot box. And when I opened it, oh, the spoon train was good. 
Oh yes, get in, son. I'm so glad I got that mirror back. I bloody love this thing. Honestly, the main reason I love it so much is just the convenience. Like that, ah. Oh, I don't have to climb the ladder. So much cardio avoided. Annoyingly, the zombies keep on digging under my base like this. Damn rats! The next day, I basically just did some more pest extermination, taking out this large group of drowns, including a couple of men throwing forks at me. You twats! Thankfully, it didn't prove too difficult to convince them to throw forks at each other as well. <laughs> Which was handy in dealing with the large group. I was hoping one of them would drop a trident, but apparently not. Those animals. On day 58, I finally got some time to actually do some development of the base, instead of just having to repair things or stab zombies. But sadly, I quite quickly ran out of stone again, so I had to head back into the lithium mines to get some more. I did attempt to make some kind of mechanized gateway to my base, but sadly my engineering skills are equivalent to that of a bonobo, and so it didn't really go anywhere, sadly. <laughs> look at this, look at this terrible machine, like what's it for? I really don't know what I was intending to do here. <laughs> it's fine. Perfect! In actual fact, the main thing it's supposed to be for is keeping Cheesy inside, because he keeps on running onto the magma blocks and nearly dying, so I would like some way to keep him in, but by god I'm a terrible engineer. During the evening, I managed to fish up an infinity book, which gives you unlimited arrows so long as you have one arrow in your inventory. However, before I use this enchantment, I would like a better ranged weapon to put it on. The following day, as I was heading out to go and feed my sheeps, I ran into this chap who I subsequently hired, as he wasn't trying to scam me for 30 emeralds. And that day ended up being extremely lucky, as another cow had finally spawned near my base. So we can just lure this guy over. Come on, Bessie. Come on. Also, I forgot to mention, but at the beginning of day 60, there was also an additional mutation. This time, although the regular zombies didn't change at all, you'll notice that we have a couple of new friends here. What the hell are these? Ah! Oh yes, and when they go down, they also leave a pool of poison and toxicity, like browsing on a Twitter feed. But I digress, introducing the Swampy. You'll notice he doesn't have a lot of strength, he also doesn't have a lot of intelligence. But what he does have is a lot of poison. Indeed, he would make an excellent Discord mod. I decided not to take any chances this time and bring our recruit down to Cheesy. That way Cheesy can protect him until I get him some armor. This is Cheesy, he'll be, uh, he'll be telling you what to do. Basically, just make sure I have three square meals a day and that my tea is always brewed by the time I get home from the office. Now, as much as I wanted to do more building on the base, as it turned out, I was completely out of coal. So, uh, we need to get some more fuel before we can do more building. It's a bit of a pain, but it is what it is. Oh yes, the recruit. I quickly threw together this iron sword and repaired it. It's the one we had from quite a while ago, but it should serve as a good weapon to keep our new recruit friend alive until we can get him something else. So I quickly gave him this chest plate and the sword we just threw together. The chest plate is nothing special, I think it just has fire resistance or something. And it was about then that I realized that this man is holding a steak, which is better than any food that I have. Why are you holding a steak? Oh my god, you have 18 steaks. Give me those. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why would- why should you have more food than me? Now I'd noticed a few times that there appears to be a city that neither Kim nor I have visited just out here through the woods behind the village that's just to the north of my house. And indeed it turns out that I was correct. There is a fully fledged city here that none of us have been to. Which means we hopefully can find some loot here and some more golden apples and other such. Now I'll spare you, I spent quite a long time looking in these chests but aside from regular apples and gold uh, I didn't find anything particularly interesting. I'm gonna quickly edit past most of the chests that I found, so you can see what I got. And if you're interested, just pause the video and do the little five second skippy thing. But whatever you do, don't hit the subscribe button. It's a scam. It'll show you more of my videos. And lord knows we don't want that. Now I'll quickly just mosey on over to this building. Oh! I nearly died. Name tag. Hello, Perkins. Wonderful day at the office. Hello. Once morning started to peek its ugly head over the horizon, me, a depressed and slightly pissed off man, decided to head home. No golden apples to my name, despite all of those damn chests. We did, however, find a good bit of iron and a lot of levels, so I was able to kit out our new patrol guy in some enchanted iron gear. Also, I haven't confirmed this theory scientifically, but I have a sneaking suspicion that this tree is taller than some of the others we've grown. But of course, that's just my theory. 
my game thing. The next day, I headed off to Kim's. I wanted to trade him four saplings from those giant trees uh, in exchange for a few diamonds. Now, it may not sound like a good deal trading saplings for diamonds, but with all these zombies around, gathering wood is a pain. So actually, those saplings are kind of valuable. I uh, definitely didn't end up getting lost again. Not me. I also definitely didn't give up and head home because I ran out of food. Anyway, so uh, we'll name the other villager guy. We can't have one called Cheesy and one just called Patrol, so we need to give him a hero's name. Irving. A wonderful name for a wonderful soldier. Wait, wait. Oh my god, it is him! Irving, get out of there! Oh, it's Cheesy. Where is Irving? Oh, that is him. Why is he out there? Where all the zombies are. Irving, for the love of God, man, get over here before you die. Now, one observation that could be made is that our men here aren't doing terribly well in terms of equipment or ability. So, we need to make them some new armor and sharpish. We have plenty of iron, but if we went into the mine, we might be able to find some diamonds. And then it... What? Oh, my God. I hate this. I hate this. Oh, I don't like this. I don't know if I'm walking into another one or not. Please end. Okay. Those guys suck in many ways. Yes, annoyingly, the venom inflicted by the swampies also makes you blind. I remember in university, I was given some homebrew made by a friend of mine. It had a similar effect. Anyway, so we're going to attempt to go to Kim's again. And before we do that, we're going to quickly throw together a cheesy chestplate, because he's naked at the moment. This time, I decided not to get lost, and it certainly seems like Kim's made some significant improvements to his base over last time. <clears throat> Sorry, I need to make a proper... But... Sneeze! Kim! Where am I? What the hell is this man doing? He's farming! Slavery is illegal, Kim! No, slavery is very welcoming here. <laughs> oh! <laughs> In that case, I have something to admit to uh, the local law enforcement. Who, who's this? Another Oh no, he just appeared. He just appeared. He just appeared. He actually, yeah, he quite literally ah! just appeared. No, no, no! Don't kill him, don't kill him, don't kill him! Run away, run away, don't kill him! He's the only guy I have! <laughs> okay. Don't kill him! The man just prison shacked me twice! It's because I opened your chest. It said I, I'm not allowed to open things on his land. Oh, oh he's coming for he's me, coming, Kim. He's going. He's a madman! Uh, it's the hash slinging slasher! Oh god! Tell him to stop! He won't stop! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh dear! I, I think he will uh, relax now. Thank... Uh, uh, Kim, no, this, no, man, no, no. this man just no, stabbed... Steve. He's stabbing me in my mouth! <laughs> Why is he doing that? He's a, he's a psychopath! Get this man I, away I gotta, from me! I gotta get him to go outdoors. You got a stabby Samson over here, guarding the fort! Good God! I just... He, I actually just got him right before... Right before you came. Where'd you pick him up from? The local penitentiary? Good God! No, he just actually suddenly just like appeared inside of my base. I have no idea how. No, I know how! He's, uh, a, he's the replacement of the Iron Golem. That's why he spawned. Oh, okay. So it wasn't just a freak escapee from a local insane asylum then? No. I mentioned to Kim that I was hoping to make a trade for some diamonds. He said he wasn't particularly interested in my spruce saplings, but he would still give me the diamonds. Apparently he had an excessive surplus of diamonds somehow, but he wouldn't tell me how, and the cheeky bastard told me I have to watch his video to find out. Alright, that's actually a really good deal. Alright, here it's Steve. I would have given you diamonds anyways, but I just want to get some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been robbed every time I come here, I swear to... <laughs> Actually, no, last time it was good. Oh, but then again, you've been stealing all my golden apples. So, yeah, I've been pretty much robbed every time. What are they doing? What are they doing? What's that? Okay, come, follow me. What's follow that, me, fellas? Me. You want me to help you in? Oh, okay. Here, come on in. Oh, actually. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, oh, come here, come oh here, one, of, one of them's got a pickaxe, Kim. Uh, fill this hole, please, Kim. Kim, uh, if you would be so kind to. Uh, there you go. Come, 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 we've got to lure him over here. Come to me. <laughs> Don't panic, Kim. Don't panic. Luckily for us, Kim's idea of luring them around the go, side go. ended up being incredibly clever, and we didn't have any other problems from this group. Yeah, oh, they're fine. Oh, yes, yes. Burn. <laughs> Are you doing that? I don't know if this is better or worse, Kim. This is better. This is definitely better. Look at them. Uh, I don't know if this is better. Now they're all on fire. They're lighting up like a Christmas tree. Uh, Christmas trees aren't supposed to be on fire, Kim. No, but they're lighting up at least. Like what? My god, what happened there? That was immense. 
Once the horde had been taken out, I decided I would confuse Kim by jumping into a group of zombies and then simply mirroring home. Hopefully this will leave Kim baffled and confused. During the night, I decided to move Irving and Cheesy away from the center of the base. My reasoning being, I think they're strong enough now to just be able to defend each other, and there's no point in them being in the middle of the base. They're not doing anything over there. I also plan on doing some mining soon, so having them guard this spot, which is right next to the mine, may also help me out in that endeavor. Now that those two diamonds I just bought from Kim serve the sole purpose of us utilizing that infinity book we fished earlier. Making the crossbow itself is a bit of a pain in the proverbial, but I'll spare you and we can skip straight to the enchanting. Let's see what we get. This is... Okay, it's not perfect, but it'll do for now. Once we complete our next task, it will be even more useful. Like a seven-year-old in the 30s, I yearn for the mines. Thanks to my own incompetence and also Kim, we're now out of golden apples again. So first things first, we're going to find some gold. Oh, well, we got diamonds. This isn't what we were looking for, but I'll take it. No. Aha! You beauty. Yes, yeah, son. Get in there. That's what we want. 22. Not bad. Could be better, but not bad. Hello. A cave and gold. Perfect. Come to daddy. Oh, hello. I don't have a bucket with me or I would abduct you. We're juiced up now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really feeling like a superstar. We've actually got so much gold that we can't even hold it all. At last, we have everything we've ever wanted. Truly, this is a day to remember. Lobbies! Those were genuine in-game recordings, by the way, and no, I don't know what's clinically wrong with me. Righto, let's go home with this hall. Oh, it's daytime. What day is it? Day 66! Oh, lovely. We didn't get any coal, though. I had a look around at my functional but aesthetically terrible base and came to the decision that it's time to finally do something about this. We just got a lot of stone, all we needed some coal to cook it up and then we can start building. I ended up getting distracted though and started looking through this shopping manual and it looks like we can make some medieval armor and I can't help but think that Cheesy would look smoking in one of these. I actually made some for myself at first, but other than looking dashing, I'm afraid it's uh, a little bit worse than my diamond armor. Slightly worse, damn it. <laughs> Oh, but it'll be good for uh, Cheesy. I initially wanted to give it to Cheesy, but I ran into Irving first, so I gave it to him instead. Although it did so happen that uh, his, his nose wasn't quite uh, caught up in the helmet. Unfortunately though, heartbreak then occurred. Irving had managed to get himself caught under the base somehow and slain by this group of drowns here. I also couldn't find his corpse, so the saddest thing is all that gear we just made is lost forever. Employees are a dime a dozen, but I just wasted over a stack of iron making all that steel armor. God damn it, Irving. I'm deducting this from your final paycheck. I made a little bit more of the steel armor though, and gave it to Cheesy. And hopefully the set of armor won't go to waste. It was a good looking lad. As it turns out, I wasn't actually able to put the infinity enchantment on the crossbow. So we made ourselves a diamond strengthened longbow instead, and we'll pop it on here. Every great weapon needs a name, of course, and mine is no different. The following morning, a bunch of poor people had appeared on my lawn. So it was about time I give one of them a damn job. Also, with the unfortunate loss of our last employee, we can't afford to be too choosy. Unfortunately, I just realized one of the things we have to bill Irving's widow for is the loss of that enchanted sword that we'd made him. And so we're gonna have to build our new recruit here a new weapon. At the very at the very least though, we'll enchant this man some armor. We don't want any more workplace accidents happening, now do we? Thanks to that migrating group of nomads though, there seems to be very few zombies around the base, so I can finally do some work. Listen, I can't help you. You're too stupid to be alive. I did manage to finish the fencing around my base though, and it's a bad damn time. I also got rid of all these uh, auxiliary blocks that are just sticking out for no reason. And then afterwards, I witnessed my new recruit, who I decided to name Berthold, rip a man to shreds, even though he had no weapon. Did you just kill a man with your bare fists? Good God, Berthold. Now in order to build Berthold a weapon, I needed some hide, specifically kangaroo hide, as there are no cows that live near me anymore. I could of course make him a regular weapon, but I saw that there is a cool looking medieval weapon that I wanted to give him, and for that I needed a leather strip, and to make a leather strip I need leather from either a kangaroo hide or a normal cow. Luckily, in the many times I got lost looking for Kim, I think I found one around here somewhere. Ah. Sorry, I need your skin. Sorry, sorry, no more tears. There we are. Hmm! 
I put some pace on and managed to get my stuff back, but unfortunately, there is no getting back my one heart. I managed to get my kangaroo leather, but this event and the subsequent equine mauling... Oh, my God! ...convinced me that it's finally time I absolutely max out my armor. Before I forget, though, I'm quickly going to make Berthold his weapon. I made Berthold a Zweihander. The Hander ist Zwei. Yes. Now Berthold ready to stab. And following that, I did some fishing in a safe location to enter us into Day 70. Day 70, of course, came with a new mutation. The zombies have received a ever so slight intelligence increase in that now every single one of them can dig and break blocks. They won't be doing it all the time, but every single one of them now has the capability. It's a small mutation, but it could mean big things. I parked Cheesy and Berthold with his incredibly impressive sword outside of my mine because I wanted to collect more stone. I wanted them to be there just in case anything went wrong. And then set about collecting as absolutely bloody much as I could in the brief moment of respite I was given this day. But then wouldn't you bloody know it? I heard the sound that a horde is incoming. Why today? Ow. Okay. Oh wait, fuck off. Oh no. <laughs> what is this? Why are there Steve's? Why are there so many men after me? And they drop no experience, which is kind of a scam. Luckily for me, now that I have infinity on my bow, they aren't gonna be much trouble. These chaps, by the way, are known as survivors, and they're one of the types of hordes that we can get on this server. <laughs> look at them, look at them coming in. They're basically just regular people that are here in armor and weapons to take what we've got. I suppose these, I shouldn't, I shouldn't feel this, uh, ambivalent, I suppose, towards, uh, shooting my fellow man. But hey, they started it. After those moral quandaries, it was back into the lithium mines to gather more stone. And once we were done there, it was finally time to start building the base. Yes, it may be day 70, and we're only just now starting to build our base. But don't worry about that. Focus instead on the good things, like all those people we killed earlier. I worked throughout the night and into the next day. And this time, instead of chaotically just slamming blocks down, I was also chaotically slamming other blocks down around it. Yes, indeed. Sneeve has leveled up, and now we've got some block variation going on. And if that doesn't get you engorged, I don't know what will. The plan is to make this into some form of watchtower. I kept building until I had completely ran out of stone again. And this is kind of the conclusion. It's basically just a cube with a doorway, for now. Once we get some more stone, hopefully it'll start taking an actual shape. But hey, at least the house isn't quite floating. Or well, not as badly, anyway. Regardless, we need more stone to keep building. So let's do that. After I was done with the mine, Kim turned up on a walrus. Kim? Hello! Kim, what the hell is that? <laughs> I came to say hi. You came to say hi on a walrus. <laughs> yeah, basically. That is a hideous, hideous walrus. Doesn't look anything like a walrus, honestly. Uh, you can get him too. He can be your friend. What? You've come to give me your walrus? <laughs> and you've apparently brought an army with you. Oh, yeah. Where did those guys come from? Oh, I see not... you had two two new sheesies out there. Those, those aren't your employees? Oh, no, no, no. I, I only have... I... Yeah, good job, Kim. Ooh. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I, I I have one cheesy and one Berthold. He's oh, the he. He's the colossal. Uh, no 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 no. Listen, I've got a good feeling about Berthold. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna help me defend these walls. You just you wait. Uh, can you name a uh, cheesy Reiner? Cheesy is a soldier through and through. I'll give you that. Um, <laughs> so it turns out that Kim was here to enchant a bunch of his things, and he wanted to utilize my enchanting supplies, not his own. And did Kim happen to bring every zombie in the world once again? Y yes, yes he did. There are so many drowns with tridents, my god. Oh, they hit me through this iron fence, this is a bad fence. It's, it's a bad horde of zombies that wasn't here before you showed up, Kim. The game really doesn't want us to play together, I've found. Yeah, I think <laughs> if so. I, if I go to your house, I get ruthlessly murdered by a horde, and, and, and if I go to my house, and then Kim comes over, then the same thing happens. It's a bad time. Oh, they, they're getting through. They jump. They're getting over. Oh God. My goodness. Oh, no, I, I got them. I got them. I got them. I got them. Don't worry. I'm just getting, I'm getting some experience points right now. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for you, Kim. I'm a little worried about this wall that I've spent many hours building. And they, uh, if they break through there, Kim, they're going to eat you. No, 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 no. They won't. They will never. They're going to they're gonna eat you. Not on my watch. I'm you never told me you had an XP farm, Steve. <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't before you turned up, Kim. <laughs> oh, this is so fun. I love this. Oh, God, there's so many undead people here. I don't have enough coasters. Kim, there's one in. Oh, oh. There's one in. Oh, he infected me. He climbed over. Oh, God, Kim. <laughs> no, no, Kim. You're, the, you're exactly the type of man to hide the, the, the infection. This is, this is bollocks, man. I was finally getting some work done on my stupid tower. And then Kim shows up once again to ruin my good time. Oh, the power! Whoa, the flame and power! Oh, I'm glad level. you're having such a good time over there, enchanting with my enchanting table using the experience that you brought to my doorstep, Kim. <laughs> no, no, this is good. This is not good. This is, good. This is, this good is the business. opposite of good. This is frame rate and zombie hell. Kim and I decided to bravely flee the body of the base, and then Kim lent me his bazooka to try and take out a big group. Okay, uh, Kim you guys has... gotta hold it. Like a bow? Kim has guaranteed uh, me that this will not damage my base. No, I never said... Oh, God, it's so close to us, Sneeve. Is it? I don't know. Okay. I'm seeing red. <laughs> I think, it, I think, I think that, that probably got like 10 of them. Give me, give me another TNT, Kim. Okay, we're, we're going again, Kim. This one's for Johnny. I don't know who John, Johnny is, but... <laughs> oh, is that far enough? Yeah, I think so. Oh, oh that's yeah. close to your base. Beautiful. <laughs> that's close to your base. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, no. Frame rate has been restored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, that's a good shot. See, all we had to do was get the frame rate restoration device going. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's crazy, Sneeve. <laughs> Oh that my god! Really good shot. I, I don't see any damages to your base. I think it's because they're in the water. I think I think uh, it it kind of managed to absorb a lot of the uh, the damage. That was a good shot though. That was pretty much all of them. I'm impressed with myself. Johnny has been avenged, whoever Johnny is. Kim and I lured the remainder of the horde into a nearby forest where we could take them out in small groups. I'm fighting for my life, Kim. I only have four hearts. I'm stabbing with all my muster. Lost in a forest surrounded by zombies with Kim. <laughs> a true nightmare. While ambling about, I also realized that Kim's launcher that he lent me can also be built. So in case we have to return this one, we could make another. Which brings me back round to... We've accomplished two of our goals so far. We have our weaponry and we have two whole friends. Suffering from success, honestly. Now there's only one thing left to do. We need to cause untold destruction to Kim's base. After I felt like I'd done enough work, I decided to take the shortcut home and quickly check around to see if there are any extreme frame rate issues. But thankfully, aside from a few cringe lords sticking around and smelling up my good time, we seem to be fine. It occurred to me that the one good thing about Kim popping around for a cup of tea is that you always end up with a lot of levels afterwards. Levels that can be utilized for enchanting. That guy macked his last big. And instead of taking risks with my 44 levels, I decided to enchant as many things as possible. I didn't really care too much about what I got. I basically just wanted to have extra magic items on hand. And this turned out to be a very good decision, as after completing my chores for the day, I quickly popped to the village and came across Bow Man yet again. And this time I had the means to make him my employee. However, after hiring Bowman, I was out of emeralds yet again. So I quickly had to pop to the shops and sell that guy some more sticks. As it turned out, at a higher level, he started selling bolts for one emerald each. So I filled up my shopping trolley with a bunch of those and said goodbye. I lured Bowman home and told him to stand in between Cheesy and Berthold, while I quickly popped inside to get him some equipment to keep him alive. And also give him a name tag. His name is Bowman. Welcome to the team. Bowman. In terms of his weapon, I initially wanted to give him my crossbow, but he didn't want to have it for some reason. But I'm sure he'll be fine with just a regular bow, since he's got Cheesy and Berthold to keep him safe. I mean, at this point, I really don't see Cheesy and Berthold ever dying. Regardless, I then decided to commit a decent amount of the daylight of day 74 to making my base no longer floating in about bloody time. Right oh, that part's done. Kind of. Now that the house is no longer floating, the first stage is complete. Now we move on to the second stage, which will take place uh, via the city council. So it'll be done in six to eight months. And that estimate is of course, if they were on schedule and if they started today, which it won't be, 
and they won't. Anyway, old man yells at clouds. I had a few blocks left over, so I decided to get started on the outside fairings, but the majority of this work will be done once we get more stone. So logically afterwards, I headed back into the stone mine, and there apparently was a chap in here waiting for me. I'll wait for the smell to go away. Oh, hello. Cheesy's level 20. Jeezy's <laughs> literally an eldritch god at this point. And Berthold, you are level 7. That's very respectable as well. Get him, lads. My god, the machines. The next day, I'd managed to enchant Berthold's shoes, so I gave those to him. And then afterwards headed into the village to try and grab the remainder of the hay bales that I'd left behind. Yes, I recognize I really didn't get a lot done on day 75, but the reason for that was I was waiting for stone to cook to continue building. I was able to get a little bit done during the night though. It occurred to me on day 76 that although Bowman couldn't use my crossbow, he might be able to use my diamond bow with infinity on it. So I quickly ran over to do a quick check, and as it turns out, he indeed could. So now we have three blokes, all of them very well kitted out. They're like the three musketeers, if the musketeers were bald men with big noses. After completing my inspection of the troops, I basically just spent the rest of the day building. But honestly, I do feel a lot of pride for this building. I feel like this is the first building I've ever made that's actually starting to look good and it's not even finished. The next day, I decided to head back to Kim's, as I'd found another magic mirror, and I figured maybe I could trade it for some stone, instead of gathering all the stone myself. <laughs> <laughs> tree. <laughs> it's just, it's just all shaft. How much did the lumberjack table cost again? Good question, Kim. Oh, Sneev, how, uh, how you just, how said you come in here? I thought you were asking you me. I thought, I thought you were asking me about the lumberjack table. <laughs> I didn't ask you. Oh. Uh, yeah. Who are you talking to? Sneev, give me emeralds or die. Um, death, please. <laughs> <laughs> um. Kim, I, no, I came with a gift this time, instead of... You came with a gift. Yeah, but it's gonna cost you. So the, the gift is this puppy. Do you have one of these? I have no idea what, I, what that is. It's what a is beautiful that? item, Kim. Uh, truly one show of a me. kind. No, I can't, I can't wait, show wait. you because then I would disappear. Oh, wait, is that what you, oh, you, mentioned, you did mention something about... And I just so happened to have found a second one. See? Oh, lovely, lovely. Yes. Here. No, I don't want your garbage diamonds. I want stone, boy! Stone! I need There's to finish- like I, need to, I, need, I need to finish my base! There's ten diamonds here! Listen, I don't remember being paid a thing. Uh, I'm gonna need stone, Kim. Stone. Uh, actually, that's one of the things that I need as well. <laughs> what I've been doing, uh, <laughs> I've been mining, like, the tunnels. Well, I'll, I'll give you it anyway, Kim, because... Because it's amazing. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, it, where's, where's the last bed you used? Is it in this base? Yeah. Okay, good. Use that item. Is it one-time use, or...? Just use it. Oh my goodness, Neve! It's so good! <laughs> it's really good! Yes! That like uh, broken good. Honestly, the... the yeah, it is... <laughs> I, there is a, definitely a debate to be made about how uh, fair it is. <laughs> I decided to stick around with Kim for a while, and as this man didn't have a smoker on oh, the property, oh, I oh, offered to make him one. Wood. How can you do this to my enchantment room? It's smoking yeah, time, Kim. Yeah. Smoke it! Here we go. Kim, the potatoes are nearly done. Kim and I both heard a worrying amount of zombie-like noises coming from over the walls, so we decided to peek over and have a look. And we happen to see this guy fighting for his life. Apparently he isn't even hired by Kim. He's still on my payroll. I, I did check him, he cost like 400 emeralds. <laughs> really? He's an expensive man. Kim, that man right there is beating the zombies to death with a piece of meat. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm winning! <laughs> no wonder he costs hundreds of gold! <laughs> this man's literally slapping these guys with a, with a salted piece of beef! Good God! <laughs> and my guy is being lazy, not doing anything over here. Oh yeah, there he goes. You've got him in full diamond. How do, yep. you, have, how do you have so many diamonds, Kim? Do you just have a mine? I guess you gotta watch my video to find out. <laughs> oh yeah, you cheeky bastard. Alright, will do. Let's say diamonds not a problem for me. Oops. 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 <laughs> <Daisy. Oops. laughs> I decided to jump down off the wall to perform our tried and tested strategy of luring them away from the base. I also had a secondary objective to see how much the meat slapping man cost. You there, how much do you cost? 366! Oh my god! You're right, Kim, that man's asking for my firstborn child! <laughs> Unfortunately, the luring strategy didn't work as well this time, and I still had to fight a bunch of them on the walls. 
They're undergoing mitosis, Kim. Oh my god. It's a bit laggy for me, but uh... <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> Oh god. Luckily for us, after a period of time, a fresh batch of recruits ran in. The Rohirrim had arrived. Yeah, they're crazy men. What? He's shooting my guy. He's shooting my guy, Sneed. What? No, I'm not. No, no, the, the, the recruits are attacking my guy. Oh. Yeah, that sounds like a you problem. I think we did it, Kim. We survived. Yeah. Now, now we just stab the remainder. Once we defeated all the stragglers, it was then time for me to leave. All right, Kim, I'm gonna go home. But before I go, it is very important, Kim. It is very important that I tell you... Once I got home, I opened any loot bags I had on hand and also had a quick look at all the resources that Kim had just given me. Good God, how did Kim get so many diamonds? On the next day, I had decided. I had decided the way I was going to prank Kim and it was going to be through the use of this cheeky little chap. Now, I mentioned earlier in the video that the zombies have the capability of dropping gunpowder and I had been collecting quite a lot of it. If we are to follow this crafting pathway of explosives, eventually we end up at the hydrogen bomb. Now again, to reiterate, I'm not looking to grief Kim here. I just want to scare him a little. So what we'll do is we'll make a few hydrogen bombs and then we'll test one of them. The plan is to set one off somewhat near Kim's base, but obviously not in Kim's base. He'll get the fright of his life and we'll have the memes. That'll have to wait though. I'm not quite sure I have enough gunpowder quite yet. And also, we need more stone to continue building. On day 80, we had ourselves a new mutation. Every zombie, and including all of the zombie types, have received another speed buff. This time, there's Uman. And also at the beginning of day 80, I managed to get a horde. Luckily for me, it was another group of humans. Lucky because it wasn't the freshly mutated, quick on their feet zombonies. Crossbow is a fantastic new addition to take down other human beings. Let's get in the water and stab them a bit. <coughs> A former line, lads. That's right. There you are. Yes. Perfect, perfect queuing, lads. Oh, look at this queue right here. Oh my god. Very satisfying. Once the women and children had been taken care of, I then went back to my troops uh, just to make sure that they had enough food. Didn't want them starting to starve. And this is the one limitation we're faced with at this point. We've got plenty of weaponry and armor and all that, but we are a little low on food. So we might go back to Kim's real quickly, see if we can't nab a few potatoes. Look what you've done, Bowman. I spent the rest of the evening starting to tear down the interior of the base. Yes, the little floating platform was nice for a while, but it's really not fitting the current aesthetic we've got going. So this place will have to go, and we'll replace it with a nice stone room. We can keep the wooden flooring, but all the walls have to go. Just come one, come all, onto the uh, hot coals. Oh my god! I didn't see him at all. You cheeky wanker! I feel thoroughly... unamused. After I'd taken care of the zombies, I was a little concerned about my soldiers, as right outside my base was this massive crater, which had been made, presumably, by a few large zombies. I didn't personally see them, all I saw was the crater, so I went to check on the statistics of our friends and make sure that their health wasn't low, and my god, Cheesy has almost a thousand kills. <laughs> Good lord, he really is an Avengers level threat. I feel like Cheesy is going to become the final boss of this, uh, 100 days at this point. I found the Hamburglar in my basement, so I quickly took care of the stench, and then afterwards started heading back to Kim's. <laughs> no, no, I didn't get lost again. You idiot. Now this is going to be the greatest potato heist in all of history. I am going to sneak in there with the use of the center pearl, and then steal a thousand potatoes right from under his nose. He'll never see me coming. Is that you? Sneeve! Sneeve! What's Sneeve? Sneeve! Sneeve! What are you doing? Sneeve, what are you doing? Sneeve, you're making a hole here! Ah! No! <laughs> Sneeve! What are you doing? You haven't seen me yet. I asked you, you're making a big hole there. What are you doing? Oh god, no! Change of plans, I decided to do some building until it was morning. Okay, we have three hearts and we have to last 18 days with three hearts. Don't worry, we can do it. We can do it, I believe. Steve, is that you? Uh, you just me explain no, to do. it's not me. Yeah, if you could let me in, that would be wonderful. Do you want me to make you a button, Kim? Yeah, if you can make a button. I have made a button. Um, I am using, utilizing the button. Oh boy, ah, uh, I'm gonna get killed again. 
These zombies should leave Ow! their leg up on me. You shot me right in the right in the groin area. Yes. I can't believe he got mad at me for utilizing the block that I placed. I helped build this place, Kim. No, I you placed that button. Kim, let me in. Kim. Thank God. After grabbing all of the things that Kim had kindly managed to save again, I then began the second stage of my infiltration plan. So you wait, 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 wait. Before out. you do that, Kim, uh, I have to do some very important actions. The reason that I came over here in the first place. Here we are. What do you do? Are you naming my guys? No. Why are you naming them? <laughs> Eugene? <laughs> Squil Squillum? There we go. They've okay, all been... I I oh my god, there is a lot of men out here, Kim. Okay, I'm making them uh, aggressive now. So don't break any of my blocks here. I can't even get inside or they'll shoot me. Kim gave me the idea to, instead of trying to go through his front door again, just toss another ender pearl. And that was a much better decision, honestly. I don't know why I didn't think of that the first time. Now, although initially my plan for coming to Kim's base again was to steal some of his potatoes and name his villagers, one of said named villagers apparently thought he was an anime protagonist and jumped into a group of zombies. So Kim had to jump outside to attempt to save him. You know, you can't take the fight. You're like me, Eugene. Come. <laughs> You're like me. Useless. And scared. It was so nice before you came here, Steve. No zombies. It, I have never been here, no, and it ever. and it been nice. I stuck around for a wee while, just covering Kim, really, while he tried to lure young Eugene out of the mob. No, no, no! My farmer's being attacked, Steve. What? My farmer. Where is he? No! No! I think I got him, Kim. What the? He killed my farmer. Oh no! I didn't even name him. I didn't even name the farmer. No. <laughs> no. Don't worry, Kim. I'll buy you a new one. <laughs> all, all these carrots, huh? Oh wait, you've already got I another lost... one. There's one here. Yeah, no, but I want more. Oh. I can't have enough of them. You can't have enough farmers. <laughs> Eugene, no, Eugene died. Eugene. Died. Eugene, no. Oh. <laughs> he was the protagonist. Died. They're all burning. What is going on? Oh, I, I, I think um, I think Jasper over there has been cleaning up. It's always like this when I'm here, Kim. I'm so tempted to push you down there. What for? What have I done? My Eugene. <laughs> Your Eugene. <laughs> Your one and only Eugene. You see his um, bow anywhere? Look at all those experience orbs I've gotten you, Kim. Yeah, you actually have got me a lot of experience. Well, this trip to Kim's had certainly been uneventful, and it looks like my work here is done. Now, Kim, I have to tell you something very important. I don't know what it is about returning home from Kim's house, but my mind is always thrown back to the hydrogen bomb. This time, I decided to make as much of the TNT that we were going to need as I could to see exactly how close we could get to actually making it. Now you're back from outer space, making a hydrogen bomb to come and blow up my base. That makes the incendiary, and then we use this like, wait, no, and then it's like that. <laughs> oh no, we've done it. I didn't think it would necessarily be possible to do it straight away, but. <laughs> oh dear, righto. Okay, let's do a wee test, shall we? Now, as mentioned previously, the intention with the hydrogen bomb isn't to annihilate Kim's base. It's just to give him a fright. So we'll want to test out the range of the hydrogen bomb to make sure we don't do too much damage to Kim. First of all, we'll test out this incendiary bomb here. Okay, that's pretty good. Right out, let's test out the hydrogen bomb. Uh, maybe not on the village. <laughs> oh, but it's so tempting to use it on the village. But I'm worried about, um, Frank, or whatever his name is, the guy that sells a stick. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll use it over there, we'll just... Okay, let's just shoot it as far as we can. You know, I probably shouldn't have done this near my base. You know, 
it's beginning to dawn on me that I might not be the most intelligent person. That's, uh... Why is there a pink zombie down there? That's a question for another day. Yeah, and then there's pillars of water. Uh, yep, yep. Things went well. Plant these. I have two hearts to my name. Now, did any of my stuff survive? Is the question. It looks like some stuff did. Hooray! <laughs> I had almost finished this damn base, and now that is not the case. Now, I had a quick look at the bottom of the crater to see if perhaps some of my items had flowed down these streams and into the center. Sort of in the denial stage of grief, I suppose. It would seem that the, the three quarters of my base that was completely atomically annihilated included the chests on the west side of my base, which held all of my backup gear. <laughs> and the only chest remaining is the food chest and the valuables chest. Oh, yay, we, we've got a mirror. Okay, and we've got some diamonds. And we've got all this iron. And steel. Hooray! We, we've lost everything else. And I just accidentally locked this chest. Oh my god. So my plan to survive the next 16 days is thus. Obviously there is nothing to salvage in this base, and it took us 82 days to be able to build it up to the state that it was in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take anything valuable that remains, we're gonna scavenge all of the best armor off of our soldiers, and then we're gonna go live at Kim's. Bertold, um... Actually, Cheesy, you've got the most health. Can I borrow this? Bertold, you can have that. I'm gonna borrow these. Thank you. Uh, shoes. Bowman, please. Oh my god, I forgot I gave you such good shoes. Yes, lads, listen, now's not the time to be sad about all of the the loss of gear that we're all experiencing right now. Now, the sun was beginning the set at this point, so it was time to get some pace on. I told the boys to follow me, and then started, hopefully, heading in the correct direction towards Kim. I actually did end up leaving Berthold behind in my mine, as the boys were having trouble following me over water. So I figure this way, if Cheesy and Bo Man end up getting drowned, or falling into a hole or something, then I can at least double back and go and grab Berthold. Unfortunately, the depopulated retinue, in combination with my lack of good armor, led to complication. Where is Cheesy? Oh yeah? I was slain by Swampy. Swampy, how could you? Right, I've got one heart. Don't worry, there's plenty. Oh, it's Kim's house. Yes, of all the places that this game could have randomly spawned me, it happened to spawn me right outside Kim's place. Kim! Oh. Uh, Kim? Who are you? If you would be so kind to let me in the front door, would be greatly appreciated. If I could have a cup of tea as well, I've had a horrible evening. <laughs> so many hearts do you have now, Steve? That, I think that's the question I need to ask you. Like 12? 12 hearts. Yep. Ah, yep. Beautiful. At least. At least 12. So how, how are you these days, Steve? I'm not gonna like him. My health has been uh, not so good. Oh! And so ends my 100 days journey. Now, did I see that campfire? Yes, yes I did. But did I know it would kill me instantly? No, I assumed I had a couple of ticks to be able to move out of it. I thought it'd be funny to say to Kim like, Oh, I stood at that campfire for 0.1 of a second and I lost half my health. But with that said, honestly, I thought that ending was hilarious. I'm such an idiot. Huge thank you to our boy Kim, by the way. It was so much fun getting to play with him. And make sure you go check out his video. It should be uploaded around the same time as mine. And apparently Bo Man got up to some shenanigans after I died. Anyway, thank you so much to the patrons. I'm sorry this one took so long. I'll hopefully see you soon. Not three months this time, but no promises. I'd like to specifically thank Olivia Jade, Angelo, Dark Void 96 Richard Chesky, and Shane the Destroyer for no particular reason. Thank you, and goodbye.